Well, hello everyone. It's Jeff from Mid Atlantic Craps. We're dual streaming over on the uh, Roll to Wins channel. That's Ed's channel. He's there in the middle. And we've got Gargo all the way, I guess that's stage right, maybe. I don't know. Uh, but we're here tonight. This is uh, episode two Mechanics and Science of Unraveling the Mysteries behind Dyson Fluids. Welcome, uh, Ed. How are you doing, my friend? I am doing well, and I want to propose a toast to your birthday. It was like oh, this week. a happy thank birthday you. there to Jeff. Thank you. I can only drink this stuff, but I'll do that. Happy birthday. Oh, oh man, and a hard way. Only like this. No, commer no free commercials. <laughs> Well, uh, birthday was yesterday, but I appreciate that. The celebrations continue. I've got uh, another daughter to go have dinner with and my sister's tomorrow. But last night was a good night. It was a good uh, good birthday, good birthday dinner, and um, had a good time. So uh, with that said, thank you for that. Uh, Gar Girl, it uh, looks like it might be the G Show tonight. You're the one. You're the man with the plan, and uh, Ed's going to follow <laughs> suit. I'm just going to be doing the moderation and trying to keep up with the questioning and so forth, and try to keep you on track. But um, do you have something a big planned for us tonight, uh, G? Yeah, so um, we're going to talk a little bit about mechanics from how I come up to the table, how I stand, I set the dice, what I'm looking at, what I'm tossing. Um, if you're not doing it the way I'm doing it, doesn't mean you're doing it wrong. It's just how I do it. Um, Ed will probably show you how he's doing his mechanics when he's tossing. And then uh, after that, we'll uh, I'm going to go on the other side of the table over there and do some science stuff and hopefully blind some people with science and then um, uh, show you a few uh, tricks of the trade and uh, we will uh, take it from there. I'm pretty sure a lot of people have questions. Um, well, they, they do have a lot of questions, and we're as we're being uh, live right now just for just a few minutes, we're already at about 70 people watching, so I think they're ready to get to, to get going. I'm trying to get past the birthday celebration, guys. I appreciate you saying happy birthday, but I don't want It's not my show. Uh, I want to make sure that we get everybody um, in here that uh, that I want to recognize some people and say hello to some people. we got uh, Mark Mad Hatter, H2O uh, guy on Ed's side is ready to go. Mr. Yo is here and ready to go. Chris Demon Dog's on both sides. He must be dual streaming. Uh, Louise is with us again tonight. We've got uh, we've got Ben and SJ and Arnell is with us again, unraveling the mysteries of randomness. <laughs> I love it, Arnell. I love it. Uh, and let's see, Troy Rogers is here. Thank you for the birthday wishes. It's not about me. It's about the show here with my good friends Ed Robinson from Roll to Win Craps and uh gargoyle all right the floor is yours gargoyle let's uh, let's get started whatever right. you want to do so so before before we get before we get started oh ed you want to see something yeah you get it? of course all right so um you want to go ahead and uh zoom in on there you go thanks jeff so before we start um i'm gonna see which this is this is probably the better camera the chips came in Oh yeah, oh yeah. So, yeah. Um, you can you can send me an email at original gargle one word at gmail dot com. Send me an email with your address, and I will uh, send them out. So it's again it's original gargoyle one word at gmail dot com. So, alrighty. Um, the series after this one will be about mindfulness and a lot of the things that I do before I get on the table, I'll cover in that series. But, um, basically let's say I, I'm here, I bought in and everything else and I'm ready to roll. So for me, there are two ways I, I stand and toss the dice. If I'm, if I'm using a uh, a, a un underhand par or anything that that's close to me here on my hip, I usually stand facing the back wall. That way I don't have to worry about it. If I'm using anything that I need to be away from my hip, away from the table, then I, I, I go like this and then I turn. So now, and I'll show you. And in both, in both stands, in the way I stand, um, I either have both of my, 
my feet on my tiptoes. I tried to put a fourth camera to, to show you what I do, but I, it wouldn't register. Um, but I, I'm either on both my t feet up high or on one with one leg behind. And now you guys can't see it, but it's pretty much, you know, that way. So I'll, I'll show you first, like the, the, the partial that I do. So I've already counted the steps. I know where my position is and I know where my right foot is going to be. So when, when the dice comes to me, you know, the first thing I do is I always put my left hand here. This, my left hand never leaves this position and each step in the process is a step. And at, at any given time, if I need to redo something or if I, if something happens that I need to stop, I, I, whatever I am, I put and I go back because I start all over because it's, it's a, it's a five step process for me. So when the dice comes to me, I just take a deep breath and let it go. And I get ready with my stand. And when I do this and, and I go down to pick up the dice, I don't worry about how I'm standing anymore. All that is done. I'm standing and I stay like that until I'm done. So I look at the dice and I figure out what I need to set. So let's say I'm going to set for one five, one five. Just okay. This is done. Then I go down on my grip and we'll talk about grip here in a second, but I go down on my grip and I make sure I have it. And then I come here. At that point, I'm not worried about the dice. I'm not worried about anything. I just take a one or two second and then I release. So it's a, it's a five step process. And if I'm doing it for, let's say, um, the, the regular part toss, I come in on both of my toes and I go over reason why I go over. It's because I want to make sure that I'm straight to the back wall with my with my hand. So if I come here, I'm straight to the back wall. I'm not like this. I'm like this. And then I can just roll to the back wall. Or if I'm using my drop shot, which is my no spin shot, most of my shots are no spins. So if I'm using my drop shot, I, you know, I, I stand on my right leg, right toe, and I set the dice, and then everything, my whole body turns. You know, everything turns like this, and now I'm straight, and I just go like that. By the way, so, G, your uh, landing zone camera may not be working, unless you're just extremely camera. short. Yeah, I was <laughs> I, I was wondering the same thing. So while G's going to try to fix that camera, we'll see if that's an issue or not. Um, I do want to, I didn't mention, guys, we're going to do a question and answer period a little bit later on. I see a couple questions that have come in here. Please premise them with a capital Q and a semicolon um, or colon, uh, and then we'll get to them. I know there's a couple questions coming in, but we want to get through this portion of it, and we've got plenty of time for some answers. Can you check your back camera there, um, G, and see if it's... Uh, if it's working, uh, we are seeing nothing on the back camera. Um, it is, it is froze just on the screen is all. Yeah. Yep. Just on the screen. Right, I was wondering on. where the dice were going. All right. So, hang on. Hang uh, on. Yeah, no problem. We, yeah, this is, this is OBS. If, if I ever have a camera freezing OBS, I can't get it unstuck without exiting OBS. Well, if she has to leave and come back, uh, he can. We can we can fill with time. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you want to. Let me. Yeah, uh, if you want. If you want to do that, G, just go ahead and. Yeah, kick I back out. That yeah. Um. We'll see you when you come back in. Uh, that is. I mean, it's like I said today on the my daytime show. That uh, Ed, well. You know, Ed can go ahead and and show what he want what he how he does it, and then I can come back in yep. here. Well, we were going to fill the time. If you go ahead and back back out and come back in, we'll see if it's working then um, to get the camera up and working 
Uh, but I said today, um, Ed, on my show that uh, all of our live streams were at the mercy of, of, you know, some very primitive technology that seems to work. We're not a commercial broadcast company, and the weakest link can cause a problem in a live stream uh, as it can when you record as well. Um, yeah. But, you know, tonight tonight's about mechanics, Ed. Uh, we were talking in the green room, the green room prior to um, uh, going live, and you had made mention that people have, have watched you throw but mechanically wise for, for, um, years now. Uh, and I know you have some tips, uh, but, um, you know, from a standpoint of, of mechanics and science, I think we've got a lot of people that want to, uh, want to, uh, see, uh, this. I mean, I can, I can move the camera around over to that side and kind of show you a little bit, but the main thing is, you know, you see a lot of people, I see them a lot of times, especially in classes. And that's when the stick comes in handy because I pop them on the wrist. Uh, they leaning on leaning on the rail, and then trying to shoot down. That's not a, that's not that is you know leaning on the rail and then just trying to you know. That's that's for drunks at two a.m. That's not that's not for uh, anybody who's trying to have an influential toss at all. all. It's working uh, now, Jay. Keep talking, Ed. Keep talking. You got You got to have. You got to have certain i have certain things i do as well i mean i walk up to the table i'm just like gee we're all taught the same way you grab a hold of that left rail and you pull yourself right in right into the vinyl right into you know the cushion of the rail and you stay there i stay there i don't even move i mean the only time i move is when i intentionally throw the dice off the table so i can back up and maybe move my legs a little bit but i go right back to the same spot same stance my feet are about shoulder width, uh, almost a good football stance for those that played football years ago. As far as your, your feet are concerned, you grab a hold of that left rail. I'm tall enough. I just bend right on over and I look straight down the pass line and look at where I'm trying to land the dice. After I pick, after I've got the dice set in my hand, I don't look at them. Uh, I might, I might look down just to make sure they're square. But quite frankly, I've gotten to where I can tell if they're square just by feel now. So I hardly ever look back down once I do that. Another thing I do, and y'all see me do it all the time in the videos, is I set the dice on a, on a square line or on a, a straight line, if, it, if at all possible, on a table so that my dice start off there. That's just something I picked up on myself doing. It's not, you know, not every table is going to have a line that you can reach down and grab. I've seen some tables where the pass line way out there in the middle. So it just depends on what, what table you're on. But if you got a line, set your two dice down on that line, get them square on that line before you pick them up. And then you can come back and you still be square. All right. Looks like we've got the, we've got G back now on the landing zone. So we'll switch to the screen. Um, uh, G, yeah. uh, what, I want to remind the view, the viewers on both channels, we're dual streaming mid Atlantic craps and over on roll to win the craps that, if you're going to ask a question, please put it a capital Q. We're going to come back to them. So probably an hour from now, when I get to the questions, I may not be able to queue them up. So keep your questions in mind as we get going. Please put a capital Q, a colon, and then a space. The software will change colors for me and I can get it. But, but Jay, back to you. Go ahead. Your uh, landing zone yeah. seemed to be working a second ago. All right, good. So so anyway, I, um, I hug the table a lot. And so... I'm either like this or I'm like that. So and and I try, I try to stay away from the stick guy. So that's why I'm, I use this hand a lot. But when it comes to the grip, um, you know your traditional, you know, par grip, you know whatever the dice is, um, and you can see how fast I grip that because you know it's all embedded. But to, to kind of walk you through it, and I just want to make sure that, okay, yeah, the camera can see it. Good. People don't realize that there's there's motion in your hand this way, up, down, and side to side. And sometimes you're you when when you think you're grabbing the right the dice the right way, you you're not. It's it's human nature to grab the dice this way. But if this is as a, at an angle. What I do is, if I'm if I'm doing a part toss or something, it's I just come down straight, like that. 
and then bend my fingers. So now my fingers are straight. So when I come down straight, and I don't know if you can you can see it through the zoom camera, but when I come down straight, the you see the the thumb right here has a lot of play. Thumb placement is very important. If you're not putting your thumb where it's supposed to be, then you're either splitting the dice or one die is going off and back up or going all the way to the right. So when 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 what I do is you know when I come down and I gotta rest my leg because I can't help it but stand up like that when I'm setting the dice. I can't do it normally. I'm gonna try. <laughs> um I can't do it. I gotta go back up. Um so when I come down, and as soon as I grab it, I press down. I don't, I don't move the dice five different places to get my hand on it so just right. I, I, my opinion, I believe that as soon as you grab the dice, you need to get rid of it because the longer you have, hold on to it, the more volatility or dice split you cause. And I don't know if you can see it, but it's kind of splitting. See, it just splits. Um, the size of your fingers matter. <laughs> size matters, I guess. If you have fat fingers, you you can you can go down all the way on the dice on the table and hold it. But if you have skinny fingers like mine, as soon as I do that, the dice will start splitting. Plus, I sweat, so I try to stay skinny. If you don't, if you don't sweat a lot and you have big fingers going, you know, like holding it like this would, would, you know, is, is a good thing. But for us, for me, I have to adjust and, um, it took me a while. Um, uh, dice coach helped me with, with how to figure out how to do that. And then Howard, um, took it to the next level with the grip. So my, my grip is pretty much, and if you go like that, you can see it's where the sixes are. And, and I, it took me less than two seconds. It's just, you know, na nature. Um, it's just muscle memory and everything. Now, I always go from the deck because the deck doesn't move again. It is in my opinion that if you do anything from, you know, this way or that way, or you know, you're causing randomness in your throat. And I don't care how good you are with getting the dice to where you want right here, right here, or your swing, you're not going to do that every time a hundred percent. You, you may, you may be here one day or one throw and the next toss, you may be, maybe, you know, one millimeter or two millimeters here. Now, does that affect anything? I don't know, but it's not the same, you know, 50 inches or 49.999 is not the same. So I always go from the deck and honestly, you know, back swinging and, and all this is, is to me, uh, you know, I've, I've seen more people seven out doing that crap than, than anybody else. Um, but I'll leave that alone. I, I go from the, from the deck. The other thing that I want to say from a mechanical perspective, it, you gotta, you gotta pick a landing zone and hit your landing zone. Landing zone is important. If you go watch my tosses back when, you know, Jeff and, I, and Ed and I did crapsies and stuff like that, my landing zone, and I hope this camera is still working. It is. It is. Good. My landing zone is either here or if I'm doing the drop shot, it's here. You can go by. Now, the dice would go all over the place, but because I'm trying to figure out the bouncy table, but my landing zone is the same. Now, why is that important? Well, number one, you got to get a baseline. You got to be consistent in where you're throwing the dice. 
depending on the shot, some may say the whole table is their landing zone because they're doing a certain shot. Well, I'm doing different shots and I have to pick a landing zone and I have to adjust the velocity of the dice and how far and how hard it's gonna hit the back wall depending on the bounciness of the dice. Now, why is that important also? Well, let's say that I set the hard ways and I throw the dice over here and I, and I, and I get a two, five, seven. I know, I, but let's say I get a two, five, seven. Okay, well, it double pitched, then maybe I need to do something else. So I do something else and now I throw the dice over there and I hit a seven. 99% of the people on YouTube that I see do that, start changing sets. It's not your freaking set, it's your freaking toss. Not, it's, not, it's not the set fault that you seven now, it's because you set the dice based on what, how you threw it over there, not in the corner. You shouldn't change dice sets. You should, you should say, you know what, I'm gonna concentrate on throwing it here and see if I, if I get the seven again. Consistent landing zone gives you a baseline so that you can figure out what dice set to use. I said it before and I'll say it again. I am not a believer in changing dice sets in the middle of the roll. If I show up to a table, then that's, that's my opinion. Again, those are my, those, that's what I do. It's my opinions. That's, that's not fact. Don't start hating on me. This is just my, what I do in my opinion. Um, if I if my first roll is a seven, come out. I look at it and I say, did I do something wrong? Is it the right set? Is it the wrong set? What do I need to do? And then I may change it on the come out. But once the roll starts, I don't chase. I don't change sets to hit a number. I don't do any of that stuff. Because my attitude is that if I'm rolling the same way, I'm going to hit repeaters. And if I'm making money off of repeaters, then I don't care about anything else. The, repeat, the repeaters is where you make mon your money. We'll talk about that in the betting strategy. Well, Ed will, will show you how to do that. I don't, I don't know how to bet. Um, I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, the repeater is where I make my money. Uh, you know, so... The mechanics are everything. It, the eye, dice influencing, influencing the dice starts with the moment you come up to the table until the moment you release the dice. After you release the dice, you have no control. You don't know what's going to happen. But everything you do before that influences what happens. If I just take the dice and just throw it, I just influenced something. What did I influence? I influenced the random thoughts because I didn't do anything. I just picked it up and threw it. But if I slowly set the dice and I set it to a certain number and I pick it up a certain way and I just slowly toss it to the back wall, then I'm influencing something. What am I influencing? I'm influencing a soft touch, a soft toss, a soft landing, a soft back wall hit. We'll talk about that in the science here in a little bit. But you you gotta get you gotta get consistent and you gotta get certain consistency, then that's why you practice in your mechanics. If you can set the dice and toss it the same way every time. At some point, you're going to make money because you're going to figure out how how to, what what the right uh, dice set is, and you're going to figure out what the right bet is. Consistency makes money. Accuracy makes money. So, dice grip, dice set, dice toss. That is very important. I'll pause here. Ed, you got something that you can add? <clears throat> Well, I think that uh, you've done a very good job of explaining why we do what we do. 
and I'll address a couple of things. You know, people are different heights. There was a question that rolled by my screen earlier. I'll go ahead and knock this one out real quick. Uh, you know, why are we trying to get over? You've heard me say before on some of the other videos I've done on, on the coaching videos, I, I like to see the dice right under the eye line, un, under your eyesight, right under your nose, basically. So if you're tall enough, you just lean over. If you're not tall enough, you got to get up a little higher so you can get over the table a little bit. So, uh, you know, people who are not as, you know, six foot or higher, they may have to, I know a lot of, I know a lot of controlled DIs that do get up on their tiptoes so that they can get up over the table, getting over the table so you can look directly down the line that you're trying to throw. You know, if you're leaning back and trying to throw them, well, then the next time you're not leaning, I mean, you, you, we're trying to control as much as we can control about the mechanics in the whole shooting process, time after time, up over it, looking down the line. That's versus leaning on your elbow, leaning back, just kind of taking them and throwing them. I mean, all those things bring in other variables into your toss. And what we're trying to talk about here is ways that Gargoyle and or I, and we have differing viewpoints at times, do the same mechanical things over and over and over. And y'all heard me say this before. There's a lot better shooters out there in this world than me. I played with a lot of them. I know of others. So take, take whatever I say for a grain of salt. If you want to, that's fine. But at the same time, I got 30 years experience. Gargoyle has got a whole ton of experience uh, playing this game. And the more variables you introduce into this game, the more variableness is it going to be in your toss. You're not going to hit the repeating numbers he was talking about. And you got to hit repeating numbers and you got to hit them early if you want to get your money off the table and start playing on casino money. Otherwise, your rack's going to shrink. Back to Gargoyle. Thanks, Ed. Um... Jeff, I think we can take a few questions before I move along. But before we do that, um, I just happened to see one in the chat. Um, Arnell was asking why why tiptoes. Um, so there's a, there are a lot of other questions, but we can cover that in the mindfulness um, next week if folks or or the second session if folks can hold on. But the reason why I stand on my tiptoes is because 99% 99% of the crafts tables. Are, are the same height from the ground to the deck. But some of them have higher rails, some of them have shorter rails. Based on my experience, like in Vegas and Biloxi, and, you know, 99% have the same deck height, but some have higher rails and lower rails. This rail right here is about two inches higher than a regular rail at the casino. So what I do, the reason why I, I, I get on my tiptoe is because I am the same from the deck regardless of the rail. The rail could be higher or lower. It doesn't bother me. Right here is what, what, what makes sense. And you can see my hand is, it, you know, it's straight because I'm on my tiptoe. The other, the other reason why is because when I, when I, throw the um, the drop shot or left-handed par, I, I want to be straight to the back wall. So let's talk about this for a second. I'm glad I'm glad he asked that question that question. So let, let's talk about this for a second. I get on I get on Jeff sometimes and I even on on Fredo for for going into the mixing bowl. Why do people go into the mixing bowl a lot? Well, it's it's simple. It's just mechanics. It's a natural thing to hold the dice like this, like, I'm gonna go to this camera. It's a natural thing to hold the dice like this, then like that. It's just because it's natural. Well, when you do that, then you, your hand let me see, where am I? Then your hand is at an angle. Your wrist and hand is at an angle. So you're, even you go, if you go straight, your dice is already at an angle. 
and it's going to land at an angle, go to the mixing bowl, or your whole hand is going to go like this. Okay? So that's why you hear me sometimes say, set the dice at an angle like that, that way you go straight. The problem to fix that is, is to go to go, you know, pretty much straight on the dice. So when I when I go on my tiptoe and I pick up the dice like this and go like that, I want to be looking straight, not like this, because if I go like this every single time, it doesn't matter what I do. I can hold the dice like that and throw it. It's going to go exactly where I went into a mixing bowl. Uh, I don't know what happened to my screen. You're fine here. You're, you're fine. Okay. Um, so again, if I, if I do it this way, I don't care how, I, I don't care if I do it like this. If I throw, it goes all the way to the left because it's, it's just normal for me. So in order to fix that, that was Howard, good old Howard. Howard said, hey, one, one, you're, 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 you're already like to get on your tiptoes. Why don't you just go like this and lean on the table that the stick man's not going to say anything and then just look at the back wall and toss it. And as soon as I did that, I tossed it straight. So um, it's always good to have somebody with you. I, I'm not, I promise myself I'm not going to say anything about classes, but if you're with somebody that, that knows what they're doing and they see you, they can immediately pick up on something. I pick up on a lot of stuff on camera and I try to type it in the chat for the ones that want to listen. Uh, the, the other ones I only do once and then I ignore because they don't respond back. But um, it's all, you know, when you pick up on something, you can, you can see it clearly. Um, you know, Jeff, sometimes he, he doesn't, he doesn't see it, but I see it. Sometimes Jeff, you pick up your dice like that instead of like this. And you may, you may not think it, 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 uh, it, it's a much difference, but it is, I, <laughs> I see it. Um, so anyway, let's go to some questions before we move on to the science stuff. We're doing good on time. Oh, we're doing, we're doing good on time. You're right. Um, the uh, question from uh, Arnell to follow up to what he just asked was, uh, so you want the dice below your eyes when you look down on it? Yes, I want it straight down like this. When I'm using a toss that's far away from me. When, when it's right here, I, I look at it like that, but then I bring it over here. Whether it's this or whether it's the chopper toss, you know, I'm right here. Or if it's a flea flicker, I'm right here. Or if it's the underhand, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like, like my underhand toss. When I'm like this, I'm looking straight at the back wall. I'm looking straight at the back wall. I'll do it again because I know people haven't seen my underhand. So I'll do it again. So I come up like that. And I picked up the dice. I'm looking right here. See right here? I don't know if you can see it on the camera because I'm, I'm, I can't see the screen. But right here, I'm looking straight at the back wall. So when I'm like this. So the only one that I really don't need to do that a lot is my drop shot, which I use a lot. And I don't use it here because it's very bouncy. But my drop shot. All I gotta do is just make sure that, see where I am? I'm not, I'm not like this leaning. I'm over here, but that's because I know I can go like that and just drop it there, no spin. Okay, you have a question that people wanna know, uh, are your dice flat on the table or are they sharp edge, I guess the, the cut edge before you toss? It looks to me like you have them on the cut edge. So when I, when I, um, when I set them and pick them up, they're flat. But when I go, you know, on most of my tosses, they're on the cut edge. But I know where they are because I feel my fingers right here touching the, the layout. So I know what angle. Now, I, you know, if I do an inline shot, I know Arnell 
does this. I saw him, you know, he picks it up like this and throws it. I picked it up like that. So I don't know if you can see it, but I have this finger back here. So I pick it up flat on the, from the surface and I throw it. Um, and then, or- Man, or we get a lot of hard ways tonight, Jeff. Yeah, I say that. <laughs> Best. Um, or or I, um, if I'm doing my uh, straight drop top, which is usually from straight out, but if I do it like from here, it's 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 off the deck. Yeah, so, we lost your camera. Yeah, I think we, we lost that landing zone camera again. Dead gum it. All right. Can, uh, you, you can try inactivating the camera in OBS and then activating it again. Um, but um, We'll see. We'll see what uh, what happens with that. Uh, G, if you have to back back out and come back in, uh, you can. Um, That's gold stuff. That stuff is gold. He just taught y'all right there, folks. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. I mean, um, that is gold. Um, I can I can answer a few more a few more questions while I'm I'm just going to disconnect it from here and, all right. and connect. It that well, Shooter Craps wants to know why do you use different tosses? Why do I use different tosses? Um, I I don't. I usually stick to the working again. I get to it. It's not working. Okay, so I'll have to back up again, but I'll answer. Um, based based on the bounce, the table bounce, or if I know I had a, I've, I've had good success on a certain table. I use a certain toss. Usually, if on a bouncy table like this, if I go to the casino and there's a bouncy table, I use an underhand toss. Um, good old Howard told me a long time ago, there's no reason chasing if, if it's staring you right in the face. If you use an underhand toss, you're you're this much off the, the table. Um, drop shot toss, I use on a on a kind of hard surface or a plexiglass table. Um, I, I, I hardly toss par. I, you, you won't see me do par shots or anything. Um, and also depending on what position, if I'm straight out, I usually use a drop shot. Okay. All right. You guys talk to Ed while I back out of OBS and come back in. All right, you can do that, Ed. You see, the, the we got a we've got a pit boss here now. It's got complex. Says that the players don't cup over all five of the dice and roll them and shake them. It's called burning the dice. I'll put that back up there. It's called burning the dice. It makes no sense, and most casinos don't allow it. He continues, Ed, with saying this: uh, it rounds the corners and gives no advantage except to the random shooters. And that follow up to his his first comment because you're going to put so many characters in a, in a comment makes the most sense to me there it, it, it you know it's rounding it's rounding well, the dice. i think that's what they're trying to do because they're random i mean and, yes but i'm gonna tell you while we're waiting on gargoyle i mean i i, I put together a book of tosses the last half of december first week of january and then i, I picked out a set based on the results and opened up a brand new first toss dice and they were very very sharp and once i got it didn't take me long but once i it made me think more about making them land flat which is what i do on when i'm opening up a table in a casino uh my srr improved my off axis ratio improved immediately and my double pitches drop dramatically when i went to those sharp dice and so he's right it really only benefits the random to have the ran the, the rounded off edges i, I believe that whole argument all right uh, el toro has a good uh, a good point here and gee your camera's working again so um i'm okay. gonna whichever yeah, whichever one you want to whichever one you want to answer it uh it comes from el toro uh since everyone is different would you agree that throwing what feels comfortable is more important than trying to copy something that is uncomfortable for you like with my hand i have i broke my right hand too many times 100 percent. i agree with him 100 percent. all 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 we try and do is teach the fundamentals um 
I, I'm going to, I'm going to mention him, but when cage came over, you know, I knew him, he used to shoot far. He was a good shooter before, but as his arthritis kicked in and, and he couldn't use his hand, he needed something. To, and, and I showed him how to do it from here. He took it and he made a very, very nice shot. I'm going to name it because, you know, it's going to cause all kinds of shit. But he, he made it his own, and he's now comfortable with it. Um, I, I always said, learn the fundamentals and then take it and make it your own. It, it doesn't have to be like 100% like me or Ed. If it's working for you, if it's giving you an advantage, if you're making money off of it every now and then, stick with it. Don't, don't fix it if it ain't broke. All right. Um, Arno happens to agree with that statement as well. Uh, I'm going to ask James Newberry well, to re to uh, a lot to. Of people, if a lot of people have different body builds. They have different, you know. I mean, my index finger is way shorter than my other two. That causes me issues. So I have to learn to compensate. Uh, Okay, I'm going to ask James Newberry in your last comment you put in there. I'm not sure I understand the comment. Uh, so before I display it again, can you rewrite it? He's asking, is there any mechanical device that can? It says it a number. I don't know what I don't know what you're trying to say there. There are there are many devices that you could that you could buy. But uh, Gargoyle, do you uh, support the use of one of those little finger fidget things, or is it up to the individual person? You know, how, how, I think that's what he's getting at. What what? Uh, if if you have anything. If you have any anything on your hand when you walk up to the table, they depending on the casino, depending on the pit boss. Um, if God Complex is here, he may answer. Most probably, they're not going to let you shoot the dice with it. Um, some may let you, but if you start hitting numbers and making money, they'll tell you you can't do that anymore. Um, so, um, when COVID hit and a lot of people started wearing gloves, I was surprised that they were letting people wear gloves because I was like, hey, you know, I, my hands don't stick. So I started wearing the glove, but, but I lost the feeling of the dice because of the because of the glove. So so I, you know, I didn't want to do that. But well, any foreign well, object on your hand, I think the casino is going to frown. They're not going to so let you use it. So James fixed his fixed his question, and I think this is very important. So I'm gonna go ahead and display it, and I'm gonna replace the word "it" with uh, with "hit." And he says, "Is there a mechanical device that can hit a number?" I think that's a misnomer in the DI world. We're not trying to spike a number or you know hit a number. We're trying to extend the roll so we don't end the roll. And I and I say we because I'm not very good at it. I'm just learning. Uh, but I think a lot of people out there that think that. If a DI is so good, then why doesn't he shoot for a number? Or better yet, why doesn't he just roll the big red and play the opposite side? But there's, a, there's, I don't want to get off on this mechanics, but there is a, a point there, and I think maybe we should draw attention to the fact that uh, I don't know of a mechanical d device or even setting a specific number that I'm sure somebody out there might be good enough, but the majority of people are trying to avoid the red number. Is, is that a fair statement out of either one of you? We don't, well, we, I, I, think, I, I think I think anything mechanical is built by man. Anything built by man will break or have a flaw in it at some point. So you know, eventually it becomes just as human as me if it's allowed to deteriorate like I do. But um, you know, G and I don't always agree on everything. I, I change sets a lot depending on the type of table I'm on. If I'm on an ATS table, I'm going to change sets because I know the sets I use and the sets that have a tendency, and I'm going to put quotes around that, tendency to give me a better opportunity for certain numbers. Uh, and it's a lot easier, you know, it's easier to hit an ATS in 15 to 16 rolls than it is in 30 because those 30s are hard to come by. So if you're gonna if you're gonna be a DI and you learn your toss and you learn how it reacts and you learn your sets correctly, you need you know and you're on an ATS table. My opinion, again, my opinion, is you go for that ATS quick and if you're still rolling after that ATS is hit, go for the freaking moon then. Right. Can, yeah. can you answer Nate's question here with different sets for comeouts versus a regular point? He puts it in quotation point set. Well, all right. I mean, Every, every set is determined by a person's mechanics and their personal toss. And there's no 
definitive set that will give me one number and you the same number right or same numbers there's no definitive set because we're different people we're different mechanics in our toss we've got different uh launch angles we've got different uh, acceleration off of the off of the tub floor so i mean you know there's old wise sayings then and, and you kind of kind of lean on them sometimes but the tendency to hit certain numbers is is what we're after or what I'm after. If I'm on an AT, if I'm not on an ATS table, I'm never going to change sets if I'm hitting repeaters. I mean, I'll take a five all the way to five thousand dollars. Let's just go. All right. Let's uh, let's break there just for one second. I'm going to remind the viewers we're at about 150 people on the two channels currently watching. Uh, to casual slots, your question I think is going to come up come up under the science side of it. I think it will. So Ed, that's on your side of your of your uh, uh, comments and your chat. We're streaming dual streaming Mid Atlantic craps and roll to win craps, uh, and we're going to try to get to the questions the best we can. Uh, G, I call him G. It's Gargoyle. He wanted to cover the mechanics. And uh, um, G, I have a question here about understanding your dice when they land. Does that come under mechanics, or is that going to come underneath your your uh, uh, the science portion of this discussion tonight? The science and the physics will will explain, you know, how they land. Okay. We can go into it right now if you want. Uh, well, let's just let's just go back up just one second. I think we had uh, somebody wanted to know. Um, uh, I guess our Godfrey wanted to know uh, how do you throw the Yuri toss while we're still on the mechanic here? Uh, do you throw the Yuri toss? Um, I, I use the Yuri grip, but I, you know, yes. The answer is yes. So if if my hands are very sweaty, my hands are very very sweaty, and I can't, for some reason, I cannot grab him by, like, get skinny. I, I will, I will use the Yuri toss, and I will toss like that. But the reason why I don't like it is because it puts a lot of spin on the dice. Um, okay. You can't really control the spin, and spin is um, very important, and we can talk about that when we do the physics of the dice. All right. All right, two more questions underneath the mechanics. I'm going to go back to about um, almost a half hour ago. Arnaud had a question. In my opinion, I don't, I don't see, I don't think I've yet to see anyone hit the same spot. I think it's just one's perception that hitting close to the same spot, Ben tried to prove it. I don't, I don't know if he says I've tried to prove it, but I know that um, you look at some of the tables that are out there. You know, Ed's old felt is pretty consistent with a an area, but. Um, from a mechanic standpoint, uh, the same spot, what do you consider like the area? I mean, you know, not a foot, not six inches square, four inches round. What do you consider the I, same I, area? Yeah. Yeah. So for me, it's it's somewhere around here. You right, know, let, it's me, this let, me put, area. Let, me, let me highlight Ed. He's holding something up. Go ahead and hold that up again, Ed. Uh, chip size. Is that, is that, is that what, you is that what you that? Every time I turn around, people are hitting chips down there. That must be the target. <laughs> <laughs> right. I see him hitting yeah. chips all the time down there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, if you can get yeah, that chip, if you can get that chip eight times out of ten, at least with one of your dice, you're hitting the same spot. All right. Yeah. So let's and, go back. Then you can take it. You can take it down the Gar spot. You remember I had I had sideshow shooting at a little piece of paper about the size of my fingernail. Yeah, you did. I think it was an inch square. Yeah, you did. Uh, Gar, I'll go back to your landing exactly zone. Right? Uh, go back to your land. Hey, hey, G, go back to your landing zone. I'll put full screen up here. Show that that area that you consider the same spot. I guess what Arnell is asking. So, so my, you know, I depending the landing zone moves depending on the table and the bounce, but usually it's about this big for me, right here. Or if I'm doing a drop shot, it's literally right here. It's this this area right here in the middle. Because okay. I want the dice to come in, hit this, and then land, and then stop. Okay. One more question then, um, and uh, we'll uh, we'll move on to the uh, to the to the science side. This comes from Sarge. Um, he says, uh, during a uh, come out seven is, is thrown, will you change sets or wait to see what happens again, or maybe never change the set regardless? Yeah, good question, Sarge. Um, so. You, you gotta let you gotta let me set the stage. 
usually when I get up in the morning and I'm by myself at the table, there's nobody around. And I picked up a dice and toss it the first time on the come out and a seven comes. You have about 15 seconds by the time the stick guy grabs the dice, brings it to you, and then you, you pick it up again and toss it. I have about 15 seconds to make a whole bunch of determination. Is it me? Was it the set? Is it the table? Bunch of stuff goes to your head. So you, you, that's, that's the, that's the um, again, in, in the next series, I talk about that. You, you have to be ready for a quick answer to, to what you want to do. And I already have it in predetermined. If, if something happens that I can pick up quickly on, I, you know, I'll either change the set or change the mechanic. If, if I can't figure it out after like a few tosses and I seven out, I may walk away from the table because I, I'm not going to spend, sit there put 640 across and keep losing it while I'm trying to figure out my thoughts. I, I don't, I hope that answers your question, Sarge, but it, it all, it all depends on whether I, whether I can figure out if it's my toss or my set or, or this is not a good table for me to play on. Maybe that's the best way I can, I can say it. Okay. Well, James uh, clarify going back to the question about a device. And he says, uh, what I'm saying, is there a mechanical device that gives a perfect throw and copy it? And we all know the answer to that. I, I don't know that James didn't know this, but El Toro answered the question uh, pretty good that uh, somebody did make a device to try to mimic it and show that you can throw no matter how exact the toss is simulated, dice outcome is still random, uh, debunking the theory of uh, DI. It doesn't mean that uh, somebody's not good with everything from choosing the dice set, which is another question you get ready to come up, uh, to uh, setting them, uh, releasing them, the velocity, the height, the toss, and the landing zone. You know, after that point of the landing zone, you're hoping that the dice are going to continue to do uh, the same thing they have been doing previous to that. And, and, and just because you're saying you're a DI, everybody is going to seven out. I don't care how you know how good you are it's it's going to happen any of the big teachers that are out there teaching um you know a, a course you know you're you're going and you're paying money for it or you're getting it for free it's going to tell you that you are going to uh uh to seven out i think that's it uh, there was a question here um real quick before we move on to so, science so real quick jeff, real quick, jeff. Mm -hmm. this right here is the greatest equalizer this is what causes random right here okay yep um the, you, you, can, you can control and you can influence up to the point that the dice hits here. After that, you're hoping your influence comes and then gets you the outcome you want. This is the great equalizer right here, the diamonds. Right. And, and um, what, random. Um, the uh, God Complex is saying that he would give a word of advice that the gargoyle to uh, pick, let me make sure I get this, to pick a letter to hit on the other end of the table where it leaves less variable. And I do like what he says here, aim small, miss small. I do like that, yeah. that, um, that, if, that if, philosophy. So, so he, he, would, he would know, he would know, and he, he, he understands what, what I'm about to say. Different tables have different layouts, different sizes. Sometimes the pass line is here. On other tables, it's here. On other tables, it's further. Usually, again, in the, in the, in the next session, talk about mindfulness. When I walk up to an empty table, I look at the layout. If it's something I'm going to play in the morning, you know, I size it. I sometimes go like this and see, oh, I'm going to hit this spot. Okay, that's the spot that I'm going to hit. So he's 100% he's, he's, he's accurate. I... If I if 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 there's a if there's an identifying mark, one table in Biloxi, I'm not going to mention what casino, but several years ago had a cigarette burn, and you could see it from all the way over there, and I and I aimed at that cigarette burn every time. All right, question from Dustin: um, What does uh, a dice influencer look for when choosing their dice set at the start of a hand? You go with your baseline sets that you already know from your home table. 
And are you trying to throw a horn number or on the come out? And if you are, then you go with your horn heavy set. If you're not trying, if you're trying to set a six eight for the point, and you want to lay big odds on that, then you go to your heavy on your six eight set. Doesn't mean you're going to throw either one of them, but that's what you start with. If that's that's what I start with. You know, I'm, I'm looking for I'm looking for ways I can make money. If I can hit horns on the come out, with, you know, hit three hit three hit three or four <laughs> worlds in a, a world bets in, in a row that aren't got any sevens in them. And if they got sevens in them, just keep pressing that sucker up and then roll a two or a twelve, and you make you you'll have enough money to bet with, and you ain't got to take money out of your rack. I mean, that's the way I look at it. That's why I try to do it. But doesn't mean I do it every time. Heck no. But it's fun to try. And it's a low, it's, it's a high big bet with a low cost. G, any comment on that? Yeah, people want to jump to the next session, man. I'm telling you. Um, so it, yeah. it, whatever, it's whatever set that worked the night before. Because I usually go the night before and practice really cheap $10 pass line and th see what works. And then come in in the morning when it's empty and do my thing. All right. Um, so do you want to move on to, uh, since we're yeah. coming up on the yeah. hour time frame, we'll go on up to uh, tonight was mechanics and science. Move on to probably going to be a, a heated topic here, but let's talk science. It's a heated topic, but uh, I, I just want to make sure this camera is still working. Testing. It is. One, yes. two, yep, one, it two, is. Okay, yep. good. good. So. Oops, sorry. Hold on one second. There you okay. go, G. Go ahead. Start over again. All right. So Heavy said when he was on one of our shows that the Parthos was the only one that was mathemat mathematically and scientifically proven that that works on access. He didn't go into any details. So I'm going to go into those details. But I got to give you a little history lesson first. Um, Back years and years ago, when before the Parthos got its name, it was it was called um, on excess rolling toss. Um, and I need to get my big dice over here so that I can show you what I'm talking about. But um, there was a gentleman by the name of Chris Polisky. Polisky, sorry, Chris Polisky. You pro you guys probably don't know him. But he's, he was, he's uh, known by Sharpshooter. Sharpshooter was a very, very smart, intelligent person. He had... Go down, go down further towards your wall. We can only see one dice. There you go. He had, there you go. He, had, um, he had engineering degrees. He studied physics and he studied dice. Um, I got my information off the internet and off uh, real books from real people. Uh, not not from uh, Frank Funky Smell or Greasy Greasy Johnny. Um, Sharpshooter was an engineer, and he was working with Patterson that time. And they figured out that from a physics perspective, and this is complete physics, the dice have three access it has vertical access that it can spin on it has horizontal access it can spin on and it has caddy wampus access which is caddy wampus access that's yeah. a great access yep yeah. so as they started looking at the dice they noticed that if the dice is spinning on its vertical axis like this, your stack tosses, your ch your chopper, your flea flicker, your your whatever, but it's vertical. the The only way it's going to stay on axis is if it hit flat. Forget about what's back here. Let's 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 say that this is a flat surface back here, not not these uh, pyramids. 
if the dice hits vertical anywhere here, 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 or here, it's going to go off axis. The only way it's going to hit go on axis if it hits flat. And then after that, it's going to maybe go one or two and then die, which is what Cage does very, very well. Or if it, if it keeps going, it's going to eventually get off axis. Okay? With the horizontal axis, if you can keep the dies, the die on its horizontal, it doesn't matter if it hits on its angle, flat, or this angle, it's going to stay on axis. So it has a lot more surface, has a lot more surface to stay on axis. So because of science, because of the physics of the dice, they deducted that horizontal axis has better odds of staying on axis than the vertical. You have to be perfect. You have to hit the dice flat to stay on axis. If you if, if you hit it, if you're going like this and you hit like that, it's gonna go off axis. And you can try it on any dice. If you if you're rolling the dice this way, it's gonna stay it's gonna stay rolling this way. If you're doing it like that, it's gotta stay flat on the ground. Let me, let me do it. I'm sorry, I'm using the wrong dice. If you're rolling the dice this way, it's gonna it's gonna stay on axis. Vertical it has to stay like this to stay on axis. I mean, you guys can see it. I'm not making this up. If it goes like that, then it's going to go off axis. So that's the only thing they came up with is that the horizontal axis has better odds of staying on axis than the vertical. Now, they looked at all the horizontal tosses, whether it's the ice tongue or whether it's the drop shot or whether it's the, the they used to call it the horizontal roll, which eventually became the parsha. And they said that because the ice tongue could separate the drop shot, one of the die could go like this. Um, the friction, the whole thing with the, with the die spinning causes them to stay more on axis. They deducted that the horizontal that the horizontal axis spinning die has the best odds of staying on axis. That that's it. They didn't say that this toss can 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 have more rolls than this, or this toss looks better than this. None of that. They just said that from an from an axis perspective, this toss is the best one to stay on axis. If you're if you're shooting the flea flicker and and you have your dice set on one like 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 uh, John from uh, uh, Casino Gaming TV does, you're either going to hit a one or a six. Anything else is off axis, right? Because you have the ones on top, sixes on the bottom. So in order to stay on axis, you're either going to hit a two, a twelve, or a seven. But if you're going sideways then you have a one uh where is my dice you're going sideways you have a one ten twelve four or three you have more you have more numbers that you can hit that 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 pays out but that's how you you know how to stay on access now the reason why they called the patterson on access rhythm roll is because they they figured out that when you throw it when you when you throw that's going to be weird but when you throw it like this the dice moves that way right that's a par shot the dice goes backward what makes it the physics of it what makes it cool is that when it hits the table if it hits flat, it deadens the bounce. But if, if it hits on its side, it starts rolling forward. But as soon as it hits, it slows down the dice. That's why I don't put a lot of spin. If you put a lot of spin, it increases the velocity towards the back wall. But if you have very little spin, as soon as it hits, 
it's going to slow down the velocity to the back wall. And that's what you want. You want a soft, soft touch at the back wall. You don't want something to hit and then just go all over the place. You want to, 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 to hit the, the table, hit the back wall, and die. This is very difficult to do. But depending on the thoughts, um, again, I'm, I'm, I'm going to mention him because, you know, he's very good at it. If you watch Cage, Cage throws it and the dice just go like this and die. He's been practicing it for years and years and years and years and years. He's the best of it. He knows how to throw it. Um, other people, uh, Sarge is getting there. I see other people throwing their own tosses on YouTube and they're getting better at making the dice go soft to the back wall. Now, the great equalizer is the pyramid, right? So how do you know if your dice stay on access or not? Well, I'm going to show you in a second, but somebody mentioned how the dice reacts when they hit the table. As long as they stay on access, it doesn't matter if they go like this, like this, or like that. They're going to react on, on access. However, if they hit flat, they may, they may die or barely bounce to the back wall. But if they hit on the edge, depending on how hard you, you threw them, they may go high. Or they may, depending on the angle, they may go low. And then as soon as they go low, they're going to go up in the air and go back. Sometimes you see my tosses on this bounce table. One die goes like this. You see it all the time, right? That's because one of them hit, hit really hard. That's, that's the grip. That's a grip problem. That is not a toss or, or a landing zone problem. That's a grip. One, one finger, is the middle finger is more on the left or right die than the other. And I, and I immediately recognize it. So, um, I'm going to pause here. I said a lot. Okay, can, can, can I jump in here real quick? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump on this bandwagon with, with uh, dice grinders, Arnell. Not to, not to be a naysayer or anything, but I think uh, Arnell makes a very good point here. He says... If dice skew even slightly, it's uh, not on axis anymore. Um, that that's a fair statement. Uh, so, how important um, and what can somebody do to, to to do the best they can do to reduce the skew, if you will, Arnell? Um, uh, so, I don't know if I made that question worse or, or better, but yeah. um, he's right. He's right. So basically, what he's saying is that if you land the dice this way, if you're throwing the part toss. And the dice land this way. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna go off axis. Now, let me get another die because this is very important. If you set the hard ways, and I'm gonna stay with, with what Arnold said, but where's my? This is the hard way set: fives and fours and threes, right? If, you're, if the dice lands with the fives on top and the fours showing, this is on access result. Now, here's where I'm going to be pelted with empty beer cans, empty beer bottles, and everything else that you can think of. But I stick to my guns on this. This die went off access. I don't care if it's a five showing. It went off access. Bone tracker, you only put in the numbers on top. You don't put in the numbers facing you. One of the things I don't like about bone tracker is, and I know Heavy's going to kill me when I say that. Is He's that here, by the way. Control. Sir? He's here, by the way. Oh, then I'll move on. I love Bone Tracker. I think it's the best thing. No, I'm going to stick to my gun. It's time for it's time for Bone Tracker to grow up. We're you know, we're we're moving in the technology. It needs to advance just like everything. I wish we can have it where you can put in the top pane numbers and the facing numbers because then you can get a more accurate. Um, 
because if this this die went this die went off axis because of the result because you started this way and and i don't know if you can i don't know if you can see the you started this way and you ended up that way do that again okay i, I zoomed in do that again you started this way with the five on top four and then you ended up with the five on top and a six on this one this die went on off axis even though that you got a good pain you got a good top position on axis your facing is off axis if you could if you could figure out how to to do bone tracker to where it can capture this number and that number you would get a 100 percent accurate srr and toss result i wish we could do that but until then go with what the, the go with what the top die gives you because it's a it's a it's a good accurate now now if i'm throwing and i see a um let, let's say i i i see a one six facing me but a five but the 10 on top I, i'm not worried i don't care i don't change sets because i know that the die you know the die went went off access and i have to fix it now going back to arnell if 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 one die lands a little bit on its edge it's going to either jump this way or that way depending on what it is it's 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 with it's with your grip it's with your grip if you have your you know go back to this camera right here if your finger middle finger and this is where heavy and and dice coach and and others are very very well at and i'm not because i i hold it really skinny but if you hold it down further there th that's how they shoot the dice but if your thumb is not in the right position you're going to split the dice if your middle finger is more on one die than the other it's it's going to split and when the die splits as soon as the die as soon as the die split or go in an angle it's gonna it's gonna land on its edge even though it's turning it's gonna land on its edge because it's not straight anytime you see a die go to the left or the right or split it's because of a grip not because of how it landed it landed the way it did because the grip was wrong when you first tossed it I guess can, that's that's the can, can I can I make a comment? Can I make a comment? I know Ed yes, stepped sir. away from I know Ed stepped away from his uh, from his table, but um, Steve actually uh, heavy does say that uh, you do enter the top facing dice and the and the top and the facing dice. I thought that was the case. I wasn't going to correct you because I'm not an expert. Uh, when I put my dice set into Bone Tracker, I copied out of the Craps Nation KPI. I, I put it over there. It's it's showing me five four five four. So I kind of. I didn't know if that was right or wrong, so I didn't want to update that. But I think what maybe Arnell's asking here is maybe even a three-dimensional um, dice set, maybe. So cor correct me, uh, uh, Jay, so that I understand because uh, Steve's here and, and he's actually said that it does. You do enter facing and um, and top. Well, I mean, let me jump in here real quick because I do a lot of bone track. Um, you do enter the dice set that you're tossing tops and faces. Now, when you toss the dice and they land down there, you only get paid on what's on top. Right? right. <clears throat> and so they're going to be like he showed, there might be on that hard way set, there might be a six showing and a four showing on the front or the back, whatever you want to call it. So one did rotate on that horizontal axis or vertical, whichever one it was, that axis that runs this way. All right, so the vertical axis. So it did rotate. So in the past, I used to say, okay, we got our own axis result. Because we don't know, unless you've got an ultra slow motion camera, what all gyrations that dice went through when it hit the wall and came back. One may have turned four times and one may have only turned once. And then you got an off, then you've got a one pitch off, but you don't, you, you, you call it one pitch off, but you don't know which one rotated 14 times and which one rotated 13 times, right? So 
you know, people can tear it apart all they want to, but it works. I mean, that's all I can tell you. Yeah. And you don't have to take my word for it. And if you're too lazy to enter it and do it, then do it your own way. It don't matter to me. Let's uh, and, let's throw this up it. here. I, mean, I, I used Bone Tracker and I gave it to Ed. So I, I used Bone Tracker. Um, hang on, hang on I, one I second. Think, I think hey, Gene. Gene, let me just, yeah. uh, I want to make sure I understand this because the, because this is even over my head. I'm just, I'm just a moderator here. Uh, Sarge says that, um, is it the pitch control or the synchronization of the dice in flight just as important as trying to land them flat on axis? Is, does that hold weight? The, the pitch and the pitch and, um, the grip is what causes them to land on axis. If you have the pitch and grip wrong, they're not gonna land on axis. It's the pitch, grip, and toss. It's it's the whole. It's it's a it's a it's a it's a package deal. It's the way you grip the dice, you set it, and the way you toss it that will keep them that that, that will keep them on axis. If you do a mistake in any of them, most probably they will go off axis. Well, what Heavy says here in the comments is Sarge pitch control is actually more important than axis control, but we didn't know that 20 years ago. Right. Thanks for being here too, Heavy. Yep. Yeah. So, so, yep. so what I what I showed you is just what the what the science experiment did and said. That's that's it. Again, it didn't say that you know. Um, the the stack sauce can get you more rolls than than the the ice tom or anything. It just said that the, the horizontal axis has better odds of staying on axis than the vertical. And one of the better tosses in the horizontal axis was the par shot, and that's why a lot of the schools teach it because it's one of the easier ones to keep on axis. Not that you cannot do it with the other ones, but you have to work harder for that not that this is easy also the bar shop by the way but it's one okay. of the easier ones so so while we're on the on the science portion of it and i know this is a touchy probably the wrong um word to use uh El, this has just been a few minutes ago, probably almost um, almost 10 minutes ago. El Toro says, and he's answering, he's addressing what Arnell said, dice grinders. What makes it difficult for the dice to land flat on the faces and dissipate most of the energy is the dice spinning at different speeds. Very rarely will they hit evenly together. Well, we'll you know what? You know what? It's time for Gargoyle's cheap trick of the trade because we're <laughs> what? we are going Somebody. to do it. We are going to show it at this table. <laughs> and Heavy, forgive me. I'm going right. to toss the bar shot, which I don't usually do. Let me, let me, let me jump in while he's walking over real quick. Hold on, G. Go ahead, Ed. Go ahead, Ed. Yeah. You know, I took more than one physics class in my life since I took it, since I was an engineer in college myself. Uh, and Sir Isaac Newton, those, that guy that we learned about, you know, the apple falling on his head, who discovered gravity that way. Um, the third law of Sir Isaac Newton is for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So <clears throat> what he, what G has been showing you there, what Gargoyle has been showing you is that when those dice land on that table, there is an action exerted and there is a reaction and that is equal. All right. That's, that's physics. That's pure physics. All right. So if they land flat, then it is exerting force on the table. The table is exerting the force back onto the die. Now we put the brakes on it with backspin and in the par toss, the brakes are the brakes become the backspin in the, in the conventional par toss. Less spin is more, is better than too much spin because you've got more energy to dissipate. The more energy you got, more reaction, according to, according to Sir Isaac Newton, right? So those are the things that are involved here that us normal folks that just want to go play, play casino dice and try to have a controlled toss, we don't actually think about it, but I think about that stuff because of my background. Um, 
and getting them to land flat with that backward rotation will take will put the brakes on those dice a little bit so that they go into the wall a little close a little more softer than they normally would have and the other thing that paul wiki and all those guys discovered of course they played on traditional felt tables you know 25 years ago well they had a 45 degree launch angle they wanted to launch it 45 degrees they wanted to come down at 45 degrees land flat into the wall stop that was the whole premise behind their science and this and this toss microfiber has changed that it's not a traditional felt grip anymore on those dice it's a slicker surface so you want to go from a 45 degree angle toss down to about a 30 or 35 degree toss a little softer a little less energy on it that's all part of for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction okay go ahead g i just had to throw a little more a little more physics right. in there real quick yep so so what we're going to do is we're going to so how can you see if your dice stay on access after they hit the back wall? Because you got the pyramids, right? So I moved this camera and I hope, I'm hoping to kind of show you here a little bit of experiment. So if you throw a toss and you have these pyramids, how do you know after it hits the back wall and lands that, that it stayed on access or if it was a true on access toss? Well, if you have a craft stable, or landings or or anything that you use you can order you one of these that's already sitting on your crafts table but you take it and you just lay it flat just like that now you have the same material that the casinos use without the pyramids now, is it perfect? Yeah. But it should give you a more accurate of what your dice is doing. The other thing is, if you're throwing it in the curve in the mixing bowl, you're not. It's not going to stay on access. It's got to be straight. You got to hit the straight. The straight. Um, you got to hit this this area right here for a chance for it to be on access. So I'm going to screw this big time. But let's see. I want to set the ones on top and five facing me. So that means that if you see a four or a three anywhere, that means the die didn't stay on access. And of course, as soon as I wanted to do this, I'm dripping sweat, but let's try it. Let's try it. This is live, folks, unedited. This is how we do, this is how we roll in the Shire. I'm like a hobbit myself. It went off access. I can already tell. You see? Uh, can you see the dice? Yes. In the other yes. camera? So yes. you got five two on top, but you got two fours. So, yes. They took the money because of the seven, but the dice went off access. Let's do it again. That was that was that was a shitty toss, by the way. That's not the dice fault. It's my fault. Let's do it again. Um, well, you know what? I'm I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna do the car toss because that's what people want us want to do. So. went off access again it's not because of how they it's not because of the physics doesn't work it's because i'm i'm doing a shitty toss i'm not i'm i'm not good with that so let's keep going this is how you learn whether you're keeping the dice on access or not and it's and it's simple We got a five, six, but well, what did we get on the sides? We got a four and a four. Somebody that knows how to shoot the part toss 
a lot better than me can probably get it, keep it like heavy or others can probably or even ed can probably keep it on access hey, man, hey, I like the way you put it. <laughs> you know, it's, well because you guys you guys do this stuff all the time um, my drop shot doesn't stay on access or else i would i would show it um i mean i i can go back to to this one but but uh, but i know it's hitting it's it's because of how it's landing and hitting the back wall it is not staying on access because i'm not keeping the dice in the air on access it went to the right it's because it landed not on access so what does that prove it doesn't prove that the science is wrong it proves that gargo can shoot worse a shit the part of that's all it is and i can't so but if if you if you toss the dice on access get you one of these or if i'm sorry if you toss the dice as a like a par shot and stuff like that get you one of these and keep throwing keep keep entering the numbers in bomb tracker to figure out what set you want to use but this will tell you when when you can toss the dice and keep them on access you know you've achieved a certain plateau that only very few have achieved I'm gonna pause because I I don't want to shoot anymore. <laughs> uh, well, <clears throat> follow it up and I, and and with um, with Arnell's comments and and, and I like I like the, his train of thought here. We're mm -hmm. not playing devil's advocate, but so if you toss into the diamonds, those would be on access results. It's a question. Um, I we don't know. know. If, yeah, uh, that that that's 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 know. what I was that's thinking. True. We don't know the answer to that question. I don't know if that was a serious question or not, but yeah. we don't know that because we didn't throw into the diamonds, right? Right. All, all you uh, can do, all you can do is 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 set up for a soft hit to the back wall and hope they stay on access. There are certain dice sets that you can use based on your toss. That even if the die go off access, it doesn't give you a seven. It is it is what we call a seven for giving. Um, so, not you know, what all what I'm saying. This exercise right here that that I have, this exercise is just to see if you're keeping your dice on access when they when they leave your hand and land, because there's no pyramid. It's a flat surface. So if they hit flat, they're going to go flat. If they hit on the edge, they're going to go sideways. It helps you with your toss at home practicing. So if you can get it to hit the table on access and hit this on access, then, then you're getting better at your toss. Not a lot of people can do that. But you don't know it. And you can't see it. Why? Because of this. When it goes off access, they'll say, "Oh, I hit the pyramid." <coughs> you gotta, you gotta be. If you want, really want to be a DI, and you're really on your journey, you gotta be true to yourself, and you gotta know what the hell you're doing, and you gotta know where to stand. This right here. And I have it next to me because I use it every time. It's a no-brainer. It will tell you exactly if your dice... And, and by the way, if, if, if you hit it and your dice go like that, that means you hit it hard. So this will help you with your toss also. And remember, this is a bouncy table, so good luck getting anything on access on this table. But that's beside the point. All right, Clay wants to know. Clay wants to know at what percentage do you feel you can uh, keep the dice on axis? What What are you happy percentage wise? Me. Yes. Or Ed. Uh, I my drop shot doesn't keep the dice on axis. It's an off. 
it's not I don't set the sevens and shoot it, but because of how the dice is landing, they land like flat and they and and as soon as they hit they go sideways. So um I don't have a good percentages of keeping them on, on well, access. Okay. Here's a comment from uh, Heavy. He said, you know you are keeping the dice on axis via Bone Tracker if you are consistently showing the BDOA results significantly above 44.4%. The math proves it. And I've always heard 45%, so that's, that's close enough. Um, and I think you've, you've, you've said on shows we've done in the past year that if you're somewhere in the 35 to 45% range, you're happy with everything, not just being on access, but you're, you, you, you no, feel no, as no. if you're, I, mean, I, want, I, want, I want more on access than that. Okay. Uh, the highest I've ever seen, and it was not me, was a 52% on access. That's a very high on access result. Very few and very few single pitches where you make your money. We'll get in that in a minute, but, um, you know, you can have my, mine run from, 40, let's just say 49, 49 to, to 50. A uh, book I'm on right now, man, I, I was killing it at about 51 and a half, and I went into uh, uh, a, a streak of 36 tosses in there that, hell, a bunch of them was off axis. So there that went. It went down right down to 48 and a half, 49. That's kind of my norm. I'm 48, 49 percent pretty consistent. I'd love to, I'd love to be consistently over 50 percent, but it's, it's just with my fingers and the way I throw, it's just, it's just not part of my mechanics. So I have to use a different set to kind of adjust for that. Okay. All right. Uh, G anything else? The real, the, money is, the real money is stop, the real money is stopping the double pitches. If you can get your double pitches under 8%, we find a set for you that'll work. Yeah. <laughs> I can promise you that. And, and, and this is, this is where, this is where it's okay to, to, to agree to disagree, you know, um, Heavy and I will always be friends regardless, and Ed and I will always be friends regardless, but my definition of on access and their definition of on access is a little bit different. What I consider on access is top and facing. And if you don't have bone tracker, you don't have any of that stuff, and you're at home and you're trying to figure out what your dice is doing, this is a good tool to tell you what your dice is doing. If you have bone tracker, it will, I, I use it, I have it. Ed will tell you, I, I've sent him bone tracker tools, you know, books. So I, I'm not knocking uh, bone tracker. Yeah. I yeah. didn't say that. No, you didn't say that because <laughs> I, I think yes, but you know, <laughs> but I use bone tracker. So I'm not knocking bone tracker, please. I'm not knocking bone tracker, but I'm telling you, if you want some, if you don't know what you're doing and, and by the way, uh, I, I just put this right here because the one that I had where it was an actual board that just sat here and didn't move, um, I don't know what happened to it. When, when I redid my table, I don't know what I put it. I tried to find it. So I'm just using this as an example. Um, but it, it looks ugly. So I'm going to remove it and put the nice pyramids. This is why, this is why the casinos have these. Casinos have these because it's the great equalizer because they know, they know if it's a flat surface, people can take advantage of it. There's a reason why the casinos do something. I, I know God Complex is probably still on. I wish he would just kind of chime in on this. They, they do things because because they 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 know if not there's a certain advantage that could be taken. I'm gonna tell you one of them right here. See this right here, the flat surface. If you can hit it consistently, then you can have good rolls. I've been, I was, uh, depending on the casino, depending on the mood of the pit boss, a lot of times, you know, they, would, they wouldn't care. But sometimes if I'm starting to make good money on rolls, they'll say, sir, you need to hit the pyramids from here on up. And, and then it's my choice. I either color, color up and leave, or I hit the pyramids from here on up and seven out. Ed said uh, Heavy said something. I can't read it. Uh, fifty percent is a strong goal. I've seen one student who had a legit fifty-five plus with a long run SRR of eleven. My recommendation to him was to meet me in Biloxi. <laughs> Absolutely, and let me know when he's coming. <laughs> yeah. 
All right. Um, we have uh, shifting gears just one second. This was a question that was asked a few, uh, well, probably thirty minutes ago. I didn't realize he was talking about this. This came from God Complex. It's going to put the mechanics and maybe the science together. He says, um, "Do you ask a player to move chips during the roll or pick a secondary landing zone and keep your head in the game and wait for the uh, come out roll to ask them to move the chips?" Um. I'll let Ed answer in a minute, but I never ask anybody to move their chips. Most of, mostly because when I'm playing in the morning, there are no chips in my way. And when I'm playing in, in a group, um, they, know how to, they know how to act. They know that if, if, if two of you shoot from stick right one, you can stand both of you here, and then depending on who's shooting, the other one can get skinny, right? You can back out and give room. To, to the other person. Um, well, it, b- before before Ed talks, uh, God Complex did answer your question. As, as far as a pit boss, we don't care as long as you hit the wall. He says there's no rule to hit the alligator back. If you hit the flat spots, it's fine. Beautiful. Cool. He needs, he needs to secretly tell me which casinos he's in so that I can go over there all the time. <laughs> Because, because when I'm collecting when I'm collecting five thousand dollars on a four because I have a two twenty five hundred dollar on it, they they start telling me to hit to hit the pyramids up, and that was in All right. Vegas. All right, <laughs> Ed, you were getting ready to make a comment. I can't even remember the damn question now. <laughs> tell me chips in the way. Chips in uh, the way. Ed. I forgot what the question. Yeah. I was yeah, gonna say something. Oh, the chips. Oh no! Yeah. I don't ever ask them to hit. I just I just start hitting their chips, and if they can't get the answer, then I'll move. I mean, but on the come out, I, I'll aim for their chips and see if I can get them to move them. Um, and you know, if I hit a point, if I hit a eleven or a twelve or whatever, you know, I'm good. Okay, let me hit them again. Eventually, either they're stupid and they just keep stacking them there, and I just adjust my landing zone, or they move them. But I'll I'll shoot to try to hit their chips. Again, the importance of team play. If you've got, if you if you're playing with a small group of people, and you've already agreed on certain aspects of, of how you want to play a table, a good blocker for shooters is worth extra tips for being there. All right, here, here here's a follow up uh, to what we've been talking about for the past uh, well. Almost an uh, hour and 40 minutes. Uh, Carlos wants to know, ideally, do we want to toss the dice so it slides or trickles to the bottom of the wall, and will the casinos count it as hitting the back wall? I think we just heard they will, but the first part of that question, slides or trickles to the back wall, either one of you want to respond to that? You don't want it to slide. Well, ideally, you, want to you want it to stop right against the bottom rubber. I mean, that would be the ideal shot, and you got to have a really soft touch to do that, and I don't have one. You, you, what you, what you gonna try and do? Is get it? One of them went high, but you're gonna try and toss it, like right here, like this. You want the dice to go like that. As long, as long as they, as so the casino, the pit boss, as long as they see dice going this way then they know it hit the back wall. It doesn't have to be like long, but it's, it's, but they want to see motion going back towards the shooter. Your job as a shooter is to minimize that motion. My drop shot usually comes like this, but it, it hits the back wall and they don't say anything. But no sliding, you don't want to slide it. Right. I like what the God Complex says. It's going to fall down. Let me put that back up there. He says, tell the casino the rule is to hit the back wall. Is the rule, if they wanted you to hit the alligator wall, then they could put the whole wall as an alligator backing. I, I know. I know. But but he works at, 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 one, at, at different casinos. I, I've, I've seen it to where a friend of mine and I were at Paris and... For three days we were there, he would shoot in the mixing bowl and everything was okay. All of a sudden this, this whale shows up and he bought in for $100,000 and he went five, 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 five. As soon as, they, as, soon as he did that, the, the pit boss went to my friend and says, sir, 
you need to hit the back wall. And he's like, I've been doing that for three days. They said, no, the back wall is from here to here. This is considered the back wall. All this is part of the sides. And I looked at him and I'm like, man, what are you smoking? I want some of that. We just talked, but, but he wasn't worried about my friend. He was worried about hitting numbers and the whale making money off of that, that cost. A lot of times that's what they do. They start making up their own rules because somebody's going to make money off of that. Not you, but somebody. So I know what God Complex is saying, but I know for a fact, and I've experienced it, sometimes the rules get changed. That's why I, I give the casino as less things to complain about as possible. Giving the stick guy room. I throw this way, not that way. You know, if I have to go back a little bit more, I do that. I, I try to give them less, but some casinos make up their own rules. Some, some, not all, but some casinos, they just make up the rules as they go. All right. Well, I, I don't. I don't doubt that because we've seen a we've seen a couple things um, that uh, I think it's um, uh, the, the person's having a bad day and they just want to be egotistical and show their power because they're behind the behind the in the pit. Uh, uh, most most of them are there to accommodate. And I think God complex said it once. Uh, they don't care whether we win or lose. Um, the, the the people, the dealers, they they would rather have us winning because then they're winning as well. Uh, but you're right, G. They probably, have, from time to time, different casinos have different rules. One of my locals has a sign that says, "Once the dice are pushed out to you, you have five seconds to release them," uh, and that's their rule. Um, so you know, and do they always enforce it? Yeah, it depends on the shift. Um, so uh, you know, that's the way it goes. Real quick. Uh, we'll call for questions now, guys. Uh, we've been streaming an hour and 45 minutes. Anybody that has a question, I'm going to kind of scroll back and hit a couple of the questions. Um, is there anything else uh, that you want to talk about from the mechanics or science, uh, Ed or well, or G? Well, Dan's been Dan's been asking about how do I use this. He calls it my toy, but you know we'll leave that alone. So basically, I put it back here, and I try to see where. If the, if the dice hits high or low, and then how deep of an imprint it makes. If it's a deep imprint, that means that it hit hard. If it's a soft imprint, that means it hit soft. So I'll demonstrate it. So basically, I'll just, I'll just throw it, you know, regular. And I completely yeah, I missed it. it. I gotta hit it first. <laughs> Yeah, let me let me let me get your screen just a little bit um, a little bit uh, bigger there. So I'm I'm trying I'm trying to hit it hard so that I can show them what I'm talking about. All right, so you can't see it, but it hit right here with and it and it had a right here. It has this imprint in it, so. And that's why the green dice so it hit hard on an angle and the green die went this way so let me let me do it again again it. the big target but i keep missing it because i'm i'm hitting my landing zone <laughs> i need to hit i need to move it past my landing zone so let me let me move it past my landing zone Ah, uh, there we go. I'm rushing. All right, let me let me slow down for a second. Sorry about that. All right. So, let me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it and show it to the camera. You can see that there's an imprint right here and an imprint right here, right? There's one right here and one right here. So one die came up here and one die came up here and it's, and it's a heavy imprint. So that means that the dice hit hard. What you want is, what you want is a barely, man, I have a bald spot. Why didn't anybody tell me these things? <laughs> you didn't know that already? 
Yeah, really. No. Jeez. Hey, G, you got a ball spot. What is that? What is that? 1 800 hair, hair for men? Uh, I need to call <laughs> them. Um, so let me, uh, let me do it again. Oops, I was too late with that. You one. heard it. You heard it. So this right here. So one die, barely an imprint. This die right here had a hard imprint. And you can, I don't know if you can see it on the camera or not. Yeah, if you leave it right there it? just for one second, yeah. I can zoom in on that. Leave it there just for one second, G. Just, just for one second. I'm going to try to zoom in and you can kind of point to it. All right, I'm going to zoom in right, right now. Here. Yep, there it's you right go. Here somewhere. It's right here yep. somewhere. You can see you can see the imprint. Right. Yeah, I know you can't tilt that that far because some of them will fall in, but yeah. Yeah. So, let me let me move it up. Uh pull, pull it towards the ceiling a little bit. There you go. There you go. You see that hole? Yep. Right 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 yep. here. Yep. That's that's the imprint from the dice. That's, that's, that you don't want to see that. That means I throw it really hard. What you want to see is, is barely, what you want to see is, is barely anything. You want to hear it, you want to hear it hit, but barely see any imprints. Then you know it's soft. Okay. I hope that helps. And then also you can see how high, where, how high the dice hit. That's too high. You need it a little bit lower. Mm, okay. Uh, All right. Uh, any, any other comments before we start fielding a couple questions that have come in uh, during the night? Anything else you want to talk about, illustrate? No, I'm tired. I'm thirsty. I need something to drink. I can barely breathe. All right, I'm going to go back about an hour and 10 minutes ago, and it might be a little bit off topic, but I, I, I know that this person asked a question a, a couple of times, um, and um, I don't know if they're still here or not. I've got to go back and get it. Uh, we're going to talk about table etiquette, um, and it might be a little off topic, but what is the etiquette for someone crowding the shooter, busy table, and people standing on top of each other, and just as you toss the dice, someone bumps you? Ooh. Turn around, knock shit out. <laughs> well, it, it happens. It happens. I've I've had I've had people. You know, here's what you do. Here's what I do. I turn around and say, "Sir, I was shooting a dice, and you run into me." Now we didn't seven out on that one, and I can't guarantee you we're gonna hit a number on the next shot. But I can guarantee you one thing: if you keep bumping into me, my shot's gonna be over with. Are you here to make money? Or are you here to bump into the shooter? Okay. I'm just going to ask him that question. And if he won't back up out of the way, you know, I might go to a backswing and hit him. Boom. <laughs> Sorry. I might, I might, I might, I might change to a pendulum, pendulum guy and hit him. You don't ever know. You got to do all kinds of shit at the table. But just, but seriously, I mean, you can tell somebody, look. You know, you crowd me while I'm trying to shoot. I'll be glad to step out of the way when you shoot if you'll step out of the way when I shoot. And if they don't want to do that, give them the elbow. You got a left you're, hand. You're, you're, yeah, you're nicer than me. I, I usually change my toss and hit them. If they're on mm -hmm. this side and I'm shooting like this, I, I just I just go I just go like that. And I'm like, man, I'm shooting the dice. You got to give me room. Or if, if or in, as, as in Samstown in Biloxi when I was – when I was do shooting the dice and it, the whole table was empty and all of a sudden this guy came in and he and he just stood right there with his chips and I'm like I'm shooting and he just stood there so I just changed the dice and my friend Brian was with me I just changed the dice and I went like this and I slapped the shit out of him he walked away well the dice went the dice went Kenny Wong no worth the, no the polite answers everybody wants us to give <laughs> I don't think it is either. So let's move on. Uh, Mudslide Max says, I like to keep the same set, but change what numbers are on top and facing me to influence a number I want to hit. This is based on seeing how the toss and table are functioning together. 
Um, that's kind of long. It's a, it's more of a statement than a question. Any comments right. from you? Mudd Clyde is a classic, classic guy. Love him to death. He's an old school craps player, and he is an old school R type tosser. I mean, he's got he plays around a few different grips. But when he's talking about changing his set, he's not. He says he's not changing his set. What he's probably not changing is his axis, and he's just kind of changing the set based on the things he's seeing. So he is changing his set. He's just not changing his axis. That's what I would say. Okay. All right. Hey, hey, I have a question. I have a question. How much is a stack? Because I have eighteen requests for chips so far. They're going up. They went up yesterday, I think. Yeah, they went up yesterday. 68 cents a stamp? Holy crap. I got to go buy some stamps. <laughs> well, I bought them forever stamp. stamps. Yep, I bought a mess of forever stamps. Uh, here's the next question. Um, question from uh, Casual Slots. Uh, um, do you think about, uh, what do you think about in reading, understanding your dice when they land on the table, like if they implode, explode, double, single pitch, and then you rotate the dice or flip, move them to change the outcome. I know there's a lot of channels out there that emphasize the implode, the explode, the single pitch, double pitch. Um, you know, I'll put that back up there because that's a lot to read for both of you. Um. I can answer that question. Okay. First of all, I don't care. As long as I'm getting paid on the number that shows, number one. Number two, implode and explode is not my vocabulary, so I don't really know what that means. I know what on axis and off axis mean. Uh, and, I, and I do not change because I see one off axis and one on axis because that's about 50% of my tosses. So if I've got to change sets, 50% of my tosses, I'm changing one time every two times I throw the dice, and that's flipping stupid in my opinion. You can't right. build consistency with repeaters if you're constantly changing the flipping dice. Okay, and Lou wants to know, do you, tell, do you tell the players that you're changing the dice sets if you're with a group at the table? Uh, on, do you know them or do you not know them? If I don't know them, I don't give a shit if I tell them or not, right? If, if it's buddies and I say, you know, I'm going to my horn set, that's a, that's a, that's a signal, right? You know, I'll tell, I'll tell friends of mine, you know, you've stood over me, Jeff. You've seen me change dice. You've seen me hunt for numbers. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. But I don't have a problem hunting for the numbers. Especially on ATS, right? Uh, can you tell uh, what the surface of the table is by the sound when the dice land? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Okay. You want to expand? I know a lot of hard cracking. I know a lot of hard cracking. Hard hard tops, and they keep saying, "Oh, it's a bouncy table." I'm like, "No, it isn't." I hear a clack. <laughs> Might That's be a hard, tall, hard, hard surface for somebody to throw on, but it ain't a hard surface. I mean, it ain't a, you know, it's an easy surface to throw on if it's a hard surface. Now, the thing is, is people like myself and Gargoyle, we practice on bouncy. It takes me longer to get used to a hard surface table than it does a medium bounce table because I've got two layers of felt underneath my surface. So, you know, I'm used to a little, I practice on a little bouncer surface. He, he practices on trampoline. So, um, you know, but if you get dialed in on a hard surface table and they're clacking, you're, you're landing them flat. Generally, you can make some, make some good runs. All right. Uh, gee, Carlos wants to know what the name of that toy is that you used. Uh, I don't, he ain't listening. No, I'm listening. I'm trying to think. Um, it's on Amazon. It's a it's a hand imprint thing. Um, I'll I'll I'll, look, I'll I'll Google it. Uh oh, JB's gonna have a have a conniption fit because I'm googling, but that's okay. Um, 
By the way, uh, I was going to say something about the, the other question, and I forgot what, what was being Oh, uh, Sorry, being I out. moved on. I don't even know what the question was now without backing up. Um, Dr. Hart, surface. can you tell about the okay. table? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. So so next, uh, next session is going to be about mindfulness. I'll show you how you can tell if this table is bouncy just by looking at it, at the layout. And, and right. I'll prove it. I'll have layouts to show you. All right. Um, Julio wants to know, do you have a specific set you guys like to use for inside and outside numbers? And, and I say this all the time, to what, what set works for one person may not work for the other, but the question was asked. Let's see if you guys can answer it. That is the correct answer. Um, you know, three V's, but are not all three V's are not created equal. Um, some three V's on, that I throw will give me some outside numbers and some will give me inside numbers. Two V's, same way. They're not all, they're all, they're not all created equal. And just because you see threes on top or twos on top doesn't mean you're going to hit outside or inside. Um, a more forgiving set for many people as they are learning is a cross six set. They will hit an array of numbers, but if they're solid with their mechanics, they'll end up with a, with a decent repeater somewhere in there uh, and probably have a good chance at an ATS as well. I like what Altora hey, says there. Hold on one second, G. I like what Altora says. He says changing the dice set doesn't fit the, fix the root cause of the issue. I like that. No, it's, yeah. it's mechanics. The mechanics are always the issue. Look, at me. Look what I just did. It's it's the toss. It's the grip and the toss, not the set. Um, the name of it is 3D Pin Art Toy. 3D Pin was it, Art Toy. Was it again 3D what? 3D Pin Art Toy. You can get it on Amazon. Like nineteen ninety nine, something like that. There. There. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Uh, let's go back to the other side here and see if they, um, if they uh, have, if I missed any questions, guys. Uh, we're coming up on the two hour mark, so if you have a question, um, you can answer it. We're going to go back and talk about percentages. And I think Heavy already answered it on the other chat. I don't know that I displayed it, but this comes from Clay. So 45% uh, means 55% off access. Why not try to improve the off access and use the sets accordingly? Just a question. He's kind of throwing that out there. Well, we all strive to improve our off access. Say that again, Ed. You both can talk at the same time. Yeah, I'm sorry, G. I didn't mean to speak over you. Um, I always, I always try to improve my own access, obviously, but at 50% or at 49%, let's just say you're at 49%. If you're throwing the right sets consistently with the same consistent mechanics and you've used some mechanism like bone tracker or, you know, expertise with your eyeballs, you can figure out what set you need to use based on your off axis results that you're getting, you can have definitive influenced outcomes, regardless of the axis off. But we want to improve that. We, we, the, more, the more on axis you are, the more sevens you move further away from the outcome. Because when you're on axis, you're playing the way we throw, the way I throw, I'm playing with two sevens. I got two sevens on axis. The rest of them are off axis. So which do I want to play with? Do I want to play, do I want to swim? I've asked this before on this station channel. Do we want to swim in a, in a tank with two sharks or do we want to swim in a tank with four sharks or six sharks? You pick your poison. I'm going to go with the one with two sharks or two sevens. All right. Um, question from Douglas. Uh, how do you reduce the rotation of the dice when throwing the par shot? Oh, good question. That is um, a good question. And there. So, grip has a lot to do with it. Um, let me let me show, let me dem demonstrate something. So you know the part us, you know you shoot it like this, and you, you you've seen it. 
You can also shoot it like this. And this one, this one hit the, this one hit the, hit all the way at the back wall. Let me back up a little bit. But it's the, it's the same rotation, but watch what it does to the dice. It let, bouncy table, but be, because of how I threw it, 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 it slowed down the, 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 the it's it, on, a, on a regular table, it will deaden the, the bounce. All I did was, it's, it's still the backspin, but I did it like this, and I slowed it, slowed down the rotation. Now, the sign is over there. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna take the camera, but next session, you'll see the sign. It says no spin zone. I don't put any spin on the dice. I, I, you'll see me throw the par shot to, to demo it, but my drop shot, when you know the one that I that I use from here, there's no spin. The dice goes straight in the air um, because I, I, I just, I just, I don't like, I don't like spinning dice unless it's like um, an off axis. And by the way. You don't want to work on you don't want to work on an off access toss to make it better on access because nine times out of ten people are setting the sevens and tossing it. So if you get it better, all you're gonna get is sevens. Can you throw Just Can you throw that release again? I'm gonna zoom in on you, uh, G. When you throw that release, take a look at the I, shot. Before I've you been throw doing it. bad job at showing things, man. Okay, you want to give others content, haters content. Okay, so <laughs> there's not that many here. We've got a few, but not many. So. It's it's a flea it's it's the horizontal flea flicker. Well, you're I flicking the dice, one, but you can go ahead and show it. Yeah, go ahead. You're, you're flicking the dice up. You're flicking the dice up. See see how they barely made it to the back wall. Right. All right. I people, just want, I, I, actually, 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 there are eight ways eight ways to, to throw the flea flicker. You can throw it vertical, uh, horizontal. You can throw it this way, but we'll leave that one alone. Right. Yep, I um, let me say a couple I, things to yeah, answer the question from a, from a different perspective. Um, I'm kind of built weird, and so if I'm wanting to throw a drop shot, when a drop shot has no rotation, that's the idea. You're just kind of it's almost like a knuckle ball is just floating in the air as you released it, and they just land. I use the Yuri grip, which is totally flipping backwards to 99.9% .9 of the world. But for some reason, if I put a Yuri grip on and I put the corners of the dice down, I can just pick it up and just drop it. And I don't put any rotation on it. The other thing is, if I'm using the par toss, the three fingered on axis par toss, then if you want less rotation, move it further to the closer to the back wall. In other words, if I'm shooting that way, that way right there. And I, instead of lining it up under my nose, I might move those dice all the way out here somewhere, you know, just under my armpit, maybe just a little bit left of my armpit. That's going to be less rotation just by the way the dice are set up. That's a trick fix, if you want to call it that. Otherwise, you've just got to learn not to just, you know, it's not a risk flip anyway. And a lot of people get a lot of rotation because they're doing a big risk flip, but they're not tossing it. And I read a perfect example on Heavy's board today. It was by Kev the Carpenter, and he described it as, and I'm giving him full credit for this description, as, use, as a painter using a sash brush and trying to get a level stroke on the paint. You know, he's just level, very slow and easy off the table. Yeah, Thank I played with Kevin. <clears throat> yeah, I played with Kevin. So, so Jeff, here is a yes. Yuri grip drop up. So, that's the Yuri grip right here, and just do it like that. Yeah, I saw so. went, but that's <laughs> a Yuri grip drop shot. Um, okay. What Ed was talking about: get the par shot closer to the wall. And I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not really setting the dice, so I don't care about the end result. If you go like that, 
on a bouncy table, that's what's going to happen. But on a semi-bouncy table, the dice is going to just land right there. My problem is I'm trying to show mechanics on a bouncy table, and and this is not a teaching table. But that's okay. All right. Let's move on to another question. Um, to uh, roll the bones, Joe. Uh, G does not. Gargoyle does not have a YouTube channel, so we can answer that. Uh, he's been appearing on Ed's channel. Uh, quite frequently, and uh, Ed and I have been doing a couple of um, uh, rollouts uh, where we're actually taking turns shooting. Uh, so just you know, keep the notification bell on, and you, you'll you'll catch them. I guess the question would be, G, uh, do you have plans for YouTube channel? Yeah. Is that I a yes? Did, did, yes? did we hear I that first here? No, no, okay. no, no. Yes, you're hearing it first. I plan not to get one. Oh, plan not to. I miss that word. Yeah, uh, you know my yeah. hair is bad. You uh, know how it goes. All right, uh, I don't couple know questions. If Dan, I don't know if Dan is still on or not. But did I did? Is he? You know, I did this demo on the on, with the with the three uh, D print for him. So I hope you know he he's good with that. Uh, Dan, Dan's a good one. That he'll go back and watch the show again. So hopefully that he did because that question was asked a while ago. Here's a couple of questions about shooters. Um, this first question comes from the pit boss himself. Uh, as a shooter. Is it as a shooter is in the zone? Do you agree that the shooter should be not bothered other than calling out good dice results after the release and cheer after the great outcome? And he goes on and is going to say that the positive energy at the table, he has seen it and he said it many times on ends of my show that uh, positive energy equals uh, positive uh, results at the table. Thank you. How many times have you heard me say that energy, positive energy? Yes. That's why sometimes I'm all alone by myself shooting dice because, oh man, I'm and gonna I, get and killed. I think he's right. I mean, because don't players, the question, because don't don't players don't. bring negative energy. I don't know how else to say it, but if you're playing the don't, you're either wishing or you're guessing the seven's gonna come out, and this is negative energy for me. So that's why I don't play on the table with don't players, and I don't play the don't. I like positive energy. Good. Ed, did you have something you were gonna say? Yeah, he was talking about, put that, if you can, I don't know if you can, but he's talking about if the shooter's in the zone, right? I mean, when you get in yeah. a zone where you're where you're on a good roll, you're hitting points, you're hitting numbers over and over, uh, I do agree that the shooter should not be bothered. I mean, there are some shooters that will run laps around a circle, but I'm not one of them. I'm one of them that I don't even want you to, you know, I'm, give me a fist bump, something like that, while they're making a payout. Other than that, you know. Don't 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 hit me on my don't don't punch me. I've had guys punch me on my shooting shoulder before. I mean, like hit me hard, like boom. I'm like, dude, that's my shooting arm. Don't do that. Um, you know, I, I I get in a zone. I don't want to be interrupted. I'm either I'm going to stare at something. I'm going to stare at the puck. I'm going to stare at the TV while everything else is going on. And I see that motion of the dice coming back to me. Then I'm back in focus or stayed in focus. You stay in that zone. I don't want to have a conversation. Not that I'm rude. I just want to make some money real quick. I, I did find right. the chat that I, that I wanted to put up here. And, and G, let me read this for you comment. Uh, this comes from God Complex. Uh, Mood and atmosphere matter on the game. I tell you to keep it in the zone. Every good roll that player knows what I mean stays in the zone. Don't allow the distractions to take your head out of it. Exactly. That's why, that's why you hear me say, I know I used to get really pissed off and heavy would be proud of me. Because I, I, I'm a new man. I, 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 I know what I'm, what I have control of, and other things I don't, I can't control. If I stay, if I'm in the zone, I just try to stay here. Whatever is happening, is happening. I wish people wouldn't bother me, but I can only, I can only concentrate, and I only have control on what I'm doing. Most of the time, I'm the only one at the table, so. The dealers are chit-chatting about unpaid and on vacation and they can't take a vacation and they're pissed and mad. I try to zone that out. I give them tips and say, hey, concentrate on my money, please. You know, your money is on my money. There's, there's There are ways you can deal with that stuff. But in the evenings when I'm out with friends and stuff like that, yeah, whatever. High fives, whatever. But if I do ever get in the zone, they know. When they see me, when they see the sweat dropping from the table, they know I'm in the zone and money starts stacking up. For some reason, the more I sweat, the better I roll. And I keep telling them, no, the dice is sticking. But they say, no, you're rolling better. 
I don't know. I don't know what to tell you, but he's no. absolutely right. Nope, I agree with you. Today on my show, my daytime show today, um, I was sweating. I had a, a, a gray colored shirt on and I sweat so bad, but I, I had back to back good rolls. I had a 21 and a 17 back to back. And uh, one of the people here uh, earlier on my side of the channel said that I was in the zone today, staying on access. And um, I, I, I went back and watched that. And I don't know, G and Ed, what I was doing right at that time. Uh, not right at the time, but what was I doing that's different than any other time besides the sweat pouring off my forehead, landing on the table, as G just described. So um, uh, I don't know if, you're, you, if you guys could go back and watch that. Go to the, uh, the, the, the third and fourth roll, and you'll see 21 and a 17 back to back. And I don't know what I did that was correct. Was it luck? I, I don't know. But 21 and 17, you take those two hands back to back any day of the week. Well, oh, I absolutely. think Alfredo. I think Alfredo said it best. Don't bother the shooter. I said, don't, don't, don't bother the shooter. <laughs> go, go ahead, go ahead, Ed. You're getting ready to say something. I know. I'm not gonna say that. I was. I'm laughing. <laughs> I did tell him. That, I did tell him that I'm not making fun. He was like, no, I know you don't. You guys are fun. He's good. He's All cool right. with that. Did, did you have a comment, or we're gonna move on, Ed? Keep moving. All right, let's go. All right, this comes from Clueless Craps. Um, I don't know that name before. It says, if a shooter um, if a shooter who is throwing random were to ask you to swap positions with you to better their shot, would you? And would you swap with someone you don't know who is setting the dice? And I'm going to premise that with another chat earlier that they were watching some of Big AZ's channels when he records that everybody kind of shoots from stick with the majority and shoot from stick left one. So back up to this question here from Clueless Cra uh, Craps. I'll put it up again. If somebody asked you to move, would you? Would Absolutely. you swap places with them? Because I want them to move out of my way, so I'll move out of their way. If I ain't okay. shooting, what do I care? All I'm doing is making bets. Right, right. And uh, speaking of bets, would you agree with God Complex that as the uh, shooter, um, uh, do you not agree with your role and bets should follow the kiss, keep it simple, stupid uh, syndrome? No complicated, weird-ass late bets, no weird... Uh, 102 on the six and eight. Late bets and early, as Heavy says. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For me, I mean, yeah, I mean, you keep them simple, but you need you need to know. Okay, I just pressed that eight to whatever number, and but when you pressed it, you should automatically know if if you hit that eight again, what your next move is before you even have the dice move to you. You should practice like you play and practice those betting progressions over and over and over so that all you got to do is just say it when, when, when you hit it. And if you can't think of it, if you're in a spastic moment and you just, you know, you're spazzing out and you can't think, just say same bet. Sometimes like I'll look down, I'll lean over and I'll look at the chips and I'll say, is that, is that 42 on that? And they go, yeah, I'll say same bet. I don't know whether I'm supposed to went to 90 or whether I, sometimes you just forget where you're at, but you know, there's nothing wrong with just automatically just saying, saying, if you can't think of it, just say same bet and just keep moving. You don't want to chew your own self down. Keep those progressions moving. All right. Here's a, here's a nice comment from your, uh, from your friend, um, uh, mudslide just a little while ago, gentlemen, it's a complicated skill. And how it works is open for interpretation. Thanks for shining some light on it. So we thank you. Uh, we're trying. Mac. Whether they agree with us or not, Mac, we're still trying. Yep. A, a, lot of, a lot of what we said tonight were opinions that science stuff, you know, that's from books and articles. Um, it's not from a Word document or, you know, Grease Monkey Henry or whatever. Um, but, but other than that, it's just opinions and experiences what we have at the table. Well, you know, we didn't show those slides tonight, G. Um, you know, with what we, uh, what the, the slides that we were using as far as, um, uh, you know, the rules, if you will, the, the our opinions, and, you know, we, we probably should have... Our disclaimer. We didn't put our disclaimer up there. Well, Nothing we said. Did you ask Justin Jen? Did you ask Justin Jen? Well, I, I did, but it would have taken us 35 minutes to read the fine print from her in order to, <laughs> to get the disclaimer on there. But what I wanted to say was it, these are opinions, and they're based off your actual real results from both of you. I don't claim to be an expert. I'm here to moderate uh, the uh, this, this, this show. Uh, so, um, you know, it's, anything uh, that you do that we say could cost you money. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 
All right, let's uh, let's change subject up here. We're going to finish up on, on tonight. Uh, I'm going to go back because you guys were talking about uh, people that are standing too close to you. And I saved this uh, post from El Toro because I kind of liked it. Um, so we're going to go back in time almost uh, 20 minutes ago. And I like when he said this. Uh, I'm going to put this up here. Both of you are going to get a chuckle on this. El Toro says, on the other subject, uh, bitch slapped a chip rack. Oops, I'm sorry. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yeah, make them go chasing their go make them go chase their uh, chips around the casino floor for it a minute. Uh, and there you go. El Toro Asi says he actually agrees with the pit boss um, that, who happens to be with us tonight. And we, we appreciate that. Um, and he, oh, look at this. Uh, let's take this one down. Um, remember, even a random roller can have a great roll. Just recognize a zone roll and progress your bets slower. Uh, but keep keep that pressing or keep that press. Yeah, that's a, that's, a, that's a tough one. You know, you get to a point. I don't know. Let's just say you're at 42 on a six and eight both and they keep rolling them. And you're happy for a little while collecting, you know, 50 for one. And then you go, well, let's see if they'll roll, roll some more. And then you go, well, just take me to 90. Because at that time, you, when you go when you go on up, you just got to say, I don't care. I'll collect 105 for a little while. Then if, you know, you just got to make that decision as you go and where you are as well in the session with your with your buy-in. You've got to make those decisions on on where you are with your total trip or whatever it is you're doing whether you just you know if you're driving by from work i don't get that luxury uh versus are you going somewhere for a weekend that kind of thing so you got to keep management of your rack management of your bankroll involved are you happy just collecting 50 for one or do you want to go ahead and do 105 for 90 at some point right whatever and EF, you are correct. The, the longest roll has been done by a random roll. That is a fact. Um, however, I have been at the table uh, with some people that are 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 very versed in in what Ed has uh, has has done. And Gargoyle has talked tonight. I've never shot with Gargoyle. I have shot with Ed on multiple occasions, and the proof is in the pudding because I've seen it. Does does Ed seven out uh, uh, early? Yes, he does. I mean, everybody's going to seven out. Does he point seven out? Yes, he does. But. Um, uh, you're right. The fact is that a random roller has the longest roll. Four hours at the Borgata. That's correct. So and Nobody so ever Jeff, talks about how many seven Jeff, come out seven you had either. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Jeff, I'm going to I'm going to add on to this, and, and I'm going to – let's be serious for a second. I, I've always disliked the term Randy or or or, stu or, or stuff because – or or this guy is not setting the dice, so I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to play the don't on him. Because you don't know. You don't know if that person is going to have a short roll, a long roll, or or anything. You, you, any anybody picking up the dice and throwing could be a so, or have a long roll. It doesn't matter whether you've been setting the dice for a hundred years or you just you just turned twenty one and walked up the craps table. You don't know. I don't care who you are, what you are, where you came from, who your mom, mother was, who your daddy was. You don't know. So quit making these statements about, oh, it's a Randy, so I'm going to play the don't on that. Because you don't fucking know. Be real. You don't have to put money on them. You don't have to put your money. You don't have to even play on the same table. But don't hate someone or dislike someone or make statements against someone just because they're not doing what you're doing. They're not setting the dice. Oh, I'm going to, put, I'm going to play the don't. They're just a Randy. That Randy could roll an ATS and make you twenty thousand dollars if you're putting a hundred on it. I made more money on the ATS. Let me. Let, I'm going to say it slowly so that people can understand. I've made more money on the ATS by people not setting the dice than I made on people setting the dice. Everybody hear me? I've made more money on the ATS from people not setting the dice than people setting the dice because people setting the dice hit certain numbers unless they change dice sets, which I don't. People not setting the dice, they roll random numbers. They could hit the two all the way to the 12. So let's be real. Let's be real here. You don't know. Stop calling them randies and non-dice setters and this and that and the other. You don't know. Treat people with respect at the table. Like it. Like it. 
All right. Um, I, I got complex. I'm not sure if you saw the, the, the question I put up here from Chris Demon Dog. He wanted to know if you were in the minority of how, um, where to go? Um, shoot, I've lost it. Uh, here it is. This one here. If you can answer that before the show's over with, um, it's for God Complex. Uh, are you in the minority of pitball stealers on your thoughts on the crap trends in DI? So uh, that, that, I'd be interested to, to know that as well. Also, we got a question here. Um, Duracell 8 wants to know, um, have you smashed the like button? <laughs> so that's a... That's a, I guess I'm, I'm running out. I'm running out. Oh, you might have smashed the like button on my side. Uh, I don't care if they hit the dislike button. As long as they hit it, it affects the algorithm. So it doesn't make any difference. But hopefully, right now, we're still holding true with about 130 on two channels. Um, I don't want to close it out here with this many people that are actually still watching. Guys, if you have some questions, G's tired. Ed had a long day at work. We're here for a few more minutes. Get your questions in, and we'll get them answered. We've got to talk about the next segment, too, uh, G. So it looks like yeah, maybe well, it's mean, if you were watching, if we, you know, I'm, I'm willing, I'm willing to stay a little bit longer. I, I don't know about it, but I'm willing to stay a little bit longer. If they got questions, let them, let them, you know, we're here. That's what I, I just put the final call out. This is it. The final call, last call for questions and last call for Ed to fill his last up or tip it up or whatever it is up a little bit there. Yeah. Um, I'm I got to get, get my Mountain Dew bottle. Like I'm at a Baccarat table. Take a leak. <laughs> Um, all right, uh, G, while we're waiting for some questions to come in, it looks like the next date is February 6th. Does that coincide with your calendar and Ed's calendar? This will be a mindfulness. You're, you're well, February 6th, looks, yeah, February 6th looks good for me. Um, the, the two weeks after that, I, I may not be here uh, because I may be in AC for the five-time weekend. But um, February 6th looks good. Uh, we'll talk about that, but mindfulness is coming up on the next show. We're going over the four M's. Uh, do you want to, while we're waiting for some questions to come in, do you, um, you want to yeah. talk about what to expect next time? Yeah. Um, it's, it's just being mindful of your surrounding and, uh, and I'll, I'll talk about what I do during a trip from start to finish, as far as how I can, I'll, I'll, I'll give you pointers on what to tell what table and 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 a lot of people don't play in the morning they play in the evening but it doesn't matter it the, the same the, the same pointers work whether it doesn't matter what time you play um mindfulness about if you go in a group how you can help each other um you know it's just 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 some of it is common sense other of it is just like hey little pointers here and there um and then the one after that hopefully sideshow would be ready and then we do our first um um live uh help session okay all right um james newberry's asked a question here uh what is the percentage that you either one of you hit the ats i don't know that there's a percentage but um do you do you track that at all either one of you i i, I track it based on my because i have a separate bankroll i track it based on my bankroll and um, I, it, it's a low percentage, but when I hit it, um, it, it, it builds it back up. Some, some idiot put a comment out there the other day is that, that you know, the eyes don't, don't bet the max on, on, uh, on the ATS. Uh, I bet whatever the casino will allow me to bet. At the Bellagio, I put 200, 200, 200, because they can go up to 200. Um, down in Biloxi, I think it's some of them are 10, some are 25. If I'm shooting, I'm putting the max on the ATS. The percentage of hits is low, but when it hits, it makes up your losses and more because because of the bonus. It's a bonus. That's exactly what it is. Yep. You make your um, living hitting box numbers. You make your living at this game and hitting box numbers. The bonus is a bonus. All right, yes. so it's a lot easier. I bet heavier on each end than I do in the middle. Let's just say 10, 5, 10, for example. Now, you know, I've been known to go 10, 10, 10. But, I mean, let's just, it's easier to hit a side than it is the all. All right? But, so I will tend to go, tend to go heavier on each side. I'm going to tell you up front, 2, 1, 2 does not excite me. I just soon not have a, be a table. I, I'm never going to bet that low. 
I mean, it's going to be 5 5 5, 10 5 10, 10 10 10, or quarter quarter quarter. All right. So, I mean, I, if I hit the darn thing, I want to get paid. I want to have a payday. And it ain't going to cost me that much to, to shoot for it. I mean, it's only 10 numbers. Right. All right. Let's keep it moving. It's just 10 numbers. It's just 10 different numbers. You just got to roll. It ain't hard. It's just 10 numbers. Go ahead. Ed, I have a bone to pick with you. I have Do a bone to pick with you. What? Pick you like Kelly in your chat? I have Kelly. I do. Kelly's in the chat. Yeah, Bill Hayward in the chat. He's he's he's, 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 he's you know, well, okay. So you're the moderator. Tell him to stop picking on me. I'm sensitive. Oh, I'm the moderator. I'm not sure who you. He knows you. He can pick on you all he wants so, to. That's right. So folks, that chat. Kelly Kelly Knox is the one that did his table. He's the one that did my table, and the layout, the surprise layout. So, uh, he's I. I didn't know he was listening. We're gonna to go to Murphy sometime, Kelly. I promise you. <laughs> yeah, oh, Kelly, another trip myself. Yep. All right. So um, let me back up one question. It's gonna flow into the second question. This is this comes about uh, about thirty minutes ago. Uh, Louise wants to know. Uh, thanks, uh, Gargoyle, Ed, and Jeff. Very informative video. Now back to practice it on my table. And where was the other one? Uh, I had that right here. Sorry. Uh, the real question is. Uh, when y'all going to be at the casino so we can see the action in play? And before you answer, Ed, I'm going to come down here to this question from your good friend Puckoff. Uh, Brownwater Bash, Tunica, Biloxi, or both? So we're going to kind of like switch all hoping, three of those. I'm hoping for both, Puckoff. I'm waiting I'm waiting on a date of con – I've given my, my host in Tunica a date in April. And she's supposed to be getting with her bosses and giving me a date. And if she doesn't respond accordingly, we'll just move on to Biloxi. But uh, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm planning on both. Okay. All right. So, um, I'm hoping, I'm and, and what I would tell you, know, I, I, might for, Vegas, I might even do Vegas for the years old. Wouldn't that be? I'll go find yeah. God Complex and shoot at his table. <laughs> yeah. And what I would, what I would tell, um, <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah, I'm, I I found my balls. But um, what I would tell folks is that if they see me at the table, you know, just talk to me, but treat me as any as any shooter. I I can I could at any given time throw a thirty roller or PSO, just because I do these shows with Ed and I practice doesn't mean that I can walk up to the table and and just burn it. Um, you, you gotta you gotta quit listening to these hustlers that 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 are all talk and never you never see them at the casino. We're, we're Ed and I are everybody. Real people. We're, we're everybody real people. PSO. Yeah, and yeah. I've done it. So, and people don't people don't people don't qualify uh, people enough. You know, I've I've had people that I've become friends with, despite them losing money on my toss. I had a guy one time and he's, and he's a great guy and he's, and he's got a beautiful toss himself, but I'm, I'm at the freaking gold coast with all them newbie dealers. And I've been sitting there for four hours trying to, trying to play craps and while they learn how to deal and I'm aggravated, I'm starving, I'm hungry. And all of a sudden this guy that I know, you know, he comes in and he bets 640 across. And I PSO. And I'm like, I hope you learned your freaking lesson. You didn't qualify me before you bought in. You didn't qualify me before you made your bets. So that was your expensive lesson. I'm going to go find me something to eat right now. And I colored up and left. Because number one, I felt bad because the guy did that. But number one, number two, wasn't my fault that he did that. Might have been my fault I threw a, a PSO. Probably was, but it wasn't my wasn't my fault. He bet six forty across on me, and he hadn't he hadn't even seen me throw yet today. That's his fault. All right, let me throw this out here real quick for Gargoyle jumps in there. Question from Dan D for God Complex on the other channel. Do you believe in DI, and how often do you see gamblers throw consistently good throws? All right, G, go ahead with your comment. I know you were getting ready to say something. Well, I was going to say, I was going to say, um, if people want to see me throw. So that they can come back and say, "Man, gargle throws shitty." Let me say, let me save you money. Just, just look at what I'm doing. What I've been doing tonight. 
<laughs> Look at my last crapsy, crapsy session. Of course I throw shitty. You don't have to go to the casino to see me do that. Um, but if you ever see me at the casino, come talk to me. There are no guarantees when you step on the table. You do your best. You do your best. But, you know, I, I have confidence in me. I put money on me. But you qualify me. If you're, if you're somebody at the table, qualify me. I do things because I'm comfortable doing it. But on you know I I'll, I'll qualify well I I will qualify Ed very little bit I still put money on him but I will qualify him very little bit. Crapsy is making me change my mind as many times as he's been Peter Selby lately. But um, qualify people. Don't expect grand just grander. What's the word? You know, fifty roll hands as soon as we walk up to the table. It, it, it's beautiful if it happens, but you know, be realistic. All right. That comes back to the mentality of the shooter. There's nothing to do with anybody else at the table. All right. My mentality is is I'm gonna have a long run every time I touch the dice. My mental state is I'm gonna have a long roll. If I didn't think I was gonna have a long roll, I'd probably play blackjack. Right? Now, do I always have long rolls? No. Absolutely not. I can PSO as quick as anybody. I got the I've got the stats to prove it on this computer. You know, threes, fours, twos, zeros, back to back sevens, all those things. But my mentality is is I'm gonna be Ed and Ed is gonna play his game. All right, so that don't mean that it's gonna work. But that's my mentality. And if I didn't have that mentality, I'd go find something else to do. All right. I would not play slots. Yep. All right. Uh, so to the question that the, that Dan asked about the uh, DIs, do you see longer rolls? Uh, God Complex answers it this way. Let me get that off the screen. Players who set dice top of my head throw more rolls than the average roller. So there's 30 years experience in the in the in the business and. Long-time casino person who just gave up that he's into the trade. He sees hundreds. He sees hundreds, if not thousands, of yeah. tosses in the shift. I don't, I mean, I don't know how many yeah. they see, but they see yeah. a shit pot full of, of tosses. And so, there you go. Let me uh, let me hit this one up. Uh, DC, um, to answer your question about Bone Tracker, if you go back to about an hour into the show, we've been streaming now um, two hours and thirty-six minutes. Um, you'll actually see uh, Heavy Hal uh, Haltum, Steve here who's on his forum, you can download the Bone Tracker. We had a short discussion about Bone Tracker. You can go back on Ed's archives uh, of our lives from probably four months ago, and Ed does an excellent demonstration of Bone Tracker. Uh, but yes, to answer your question, I know you probably just got to the show late. We do Bone Tracker. Go ahead, Ed. And number one, I use it a lot, many, many years. I use it now if I have questions about my toss. If I believe that my toss has changed, I'll go to Bone Tracker and see, did it change or was it my imagination? All right. The other thing is, and this is a short commercial, excuse me, Jeff, I'm That's getting ready to do a Bone Tracker video or videos uh, on my Patreon channel. So um, getting ready for that. I've already got one book done. I've almost got two books done. Then I'm going to go in and I'm going to bring the first book in, show people how I used it what the results were and what, what it said I probably should do. All right. And then I said, okay, now it's time for me to verify what it said because it changed me over a little bit to a slightly different set. And so <clears throat> I am now in the process of trying to verify whether or not it was correct or really, really close or totally out of the window. So we'll see. Um, so, yeah. so real quick, real quick, I don't know who PG is, but he says Color Up has a video of Argo uh, shooting. I, I was getting ready to get to that. Oh, I'm okay. in, God Complex. I am in. <laughs> So uh, Color Up is uh, Jeremy of the Color Up channel. He's the number one crap uh, channel there is. And evidently, I did not know this, there is a, a video of you shooting at a casino. Uh, maybe you don't know. I will put an a email in or a phone call into Jeremy and ask him if he's uh, familiar with that. I'd actually like to, to see that myself more from a comical standpoint than anything else. I, I'd like uh, to see that myself. You know, 
I, I want to get the popcorn and the soda and laugh. Um, <laughs> I got pictures. I got pictures of a guy humping on his leg. I can bring those up. <laughs> I saw those and, pictures. And so, oh, so let me put this way: if there's a video out there. If there's a video out there. I'm not aware of, and it was taken without my permission. But that's fine. All right. um, you know. Let's let's go ahead and close this out tonight. The two questions on how you qualify a shooter. One comes from Tom Marco. The other one comes from, I just slid past it, um, from Craig uh, Hazen. How do you qualify a shooter? What, what are your criteria of either one of you? Who wants to go first? Well, there was there was two questions up there. The one, other one's how do I qualify myself, right? Yeah, there is a how you qualify yeah, yourself through this next one. Yep. So it's a three-part question there. All right, so it's not uncommon to see me go up, go up there, set whatever the point is. If the point's a six or eight, yay. If it's not, then it's whatever. You're going to see me bet the six and eight. I'm going to put some probably two times odds on the point, and you're going to see me do a field bet and a come bet. And that's a slight miniature hedge. Uh, you can do not do the field bet, but I'm going to do the field bet with it. Because if I can throw for a nine, that's why I'm, I'm going to try to shoot a nine, quite frankly. Because I want the inside. And, if, and in Mississippi, if I hit a nine, if I, let's just say I hit a five. Let's say I'm screwing up and I hit a five. Well, 20 pays 29. I can take $9, put it in the rack, and place, it for tw place the nine for 20 but if I hit the nine at 15, all right, so then I got 30, I can go to 20 and put $10 in my rack and just try to shoot inside. But if it's a come bet, the come bet's going to travel. All right, come bet's going to travel. Let's say it went to the nine, if that's what I was shooting for, and if I hit it, okay, all right, then I get $30 on the field with my original bet, $30 total. I can put whatever odds, I can put the whole 30 on there and just shoot for the inside and try to hit that nine, knock that nine back off. Bet that nine in Mississippi, I'm going to 80 on the next on the next next deal because I've won enough to go ahead and place $80 and try to get 116 on the next hit. That's kind of my mental thinking that I'm trying to do to qualify myself. And so really what I'm saying is, am I hitting the numbers I expect to hit or am I getting something else? So do I need to adjust my betting and, my, and what I plan to do versus, or, or what what's, do I need to change to what's happening versus what I thought I might be able to do? And that's going to change every time you have a come out session. Okay. All right. Um, as we wrap up the show here, guys, I like El Toro. He said this about, um, about eight minutes ago. There you have it. The DI shooter just unraveled. <laughs> uh, you got some good one-liners there, right. Toro. Um, <laughs> if, 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 uh, uh, well, I, I'm not, I, I'm not sure. Uh, but guys, let me let me indulge you just one second. I know this isn't my show. I'm just a moderator. But I want to put this up here. Look at this question. It's, it, this, is, this is really hard to choose from. This is a hypothetical. Uh, Super Mario says, uh, Jeff, if you could only have two players at the table, who would it be? Um, uh, who would you take? Ed and Gargoyle. That's one choice. Dom and Scobit is another choice. Heavy and Dark Nader. Uh, and four would be Dice Coach and Howard. And you know, to be honest with you, um, that's not fair because I would mix them up a little bit. Uh, and I don't, want, I don't want Ed or Gargoyle to be upset with me, but I think I'd probably have to go with number three. I'd like to see, uh, I'd like to be at the table with Heavy, Heavy and Dark Nader. Um, you two aren't offended by me answering that question that way, are you, Ed or Gargoyle? No, that's not yours. Yeah, I thought, you know, so uh, there's well, the answer. I, I, I might switch them up a little offended. bit. Uh, um, what, what's your name again? I, I'm not offended. Yeah, Super Mario. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yep. No, so. I'm talking about you. <laughs> oh, oh, I got you. What's my name? Thank you. Thank you. What's my name? Say my name. <laughs> Let me say this. Yeah. I think I think Heavy just got offended because he was put in the same sentence as Dom. Let's go play. No, it's no, he wasn't in the same sentence. No, right. he was. It was. It was. I, it's Heavy and Darth Nader together. I played. I know, but by accident. I, I played by accident with Gargoyle once, right? I played with Heavy yep. and Darth Nader a bunch. I have never played with Dice Coach. I know him. We've had dinner. We've had we've had conversations, and I've played with Howard, all right. And so there's a lot of 
great history amongst all those shooters. But, you know, you give me a choice, I'm going to play with the guys I know. And I know Heavy. I know Heavy's toss. I know Darth Nader. I know his toss. And I know he's going to tell me when he's changing sets and what he's shooting for. And I know based on playing with, like, Nader, I know that certain sets might give him, for example, a four instead of a six. So I'm going to bet the four. And I've been ahead of him on a press before on the fours <laughs> by like $100. And he's shooting sixes and eight, sixes and fours, but he jumped on the fours late because he's and mentally he's thinking sixes and eights or something. But, I mean, you know somebody, you know their shots. And another guy that's not on there is 220 inside. I know him well, and I'll play with him any day, any day, even when he's not, not happy about his talk. All right. You played with him. You played with him, Jeff. Yep. Well, yep. Yep. Um, well, I, I just don't want to offend either one of you when I chose uh, when I chose Steve and Nate. I just didn't want you guys to, to, to get pissed at me. <laughs> no, I'm not. I don't care. That was my choice. I don't care. We're not uh, so, so I, got, I guess I answered it right. Um, uh, if, if, if you will, can you indulge me just a second so I can do a little promo here, Ed? I didn't ask for permission, but I'm going to do it anyway. Can I, can I do this? Do whatever you Real like, dude. You've earned it. All right, here we go, guys. Uh, so uh, coming up next Monday night uh, on my channel and on the Casino Gaming TV uh, YouTube channel is going to be a show where I am going to be interviewing. I'm trying to get my mouse to cooperate with me, and it's not doing it. I'm going to be interviewing uh, the original craps interviewer that's dave carlin most of you may know dave some of you may not but it's uh, next uh, monday night the 29th 8 p.m eastern 7 central 5 pacific i will be interviewing the man the myth himself same bet dave carlin he has two channels same bet he also has rolling with same bet and i hope that you guys will tune in because dave has interviewed a lot of people including ed i think once or twice he's interviewed you ed uh, and he is, he's one hell of a guy. We're going to find out his story. We're going to hear about his craps journey and why he likes gambling and why he likes craps and what else does he play. And I really hope that you guys will tune in. It's not uh, the dual stream will be on CGTV, but it'll also be on Mid-Atlantic Craps. While we have 115 people still here, I wanted to at least get that, uh, that plug in and my mouse batteries are messing up. So with that, Ed, I didn't ask you for permission to do that, but hell, I got the controls. What the hell? How am I going to stop you? How am I going to stop you, dude? I love Dave. <laughs> Dave, 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 is, Dave is a great guy. And I owe Dave, and, and, and please please tell him, if he, if he, I know he won't hear this, but uh, I owe him a debt of gratitude because when I first started my channel, he interviewed me very, very early, and it gave me a tremendous boost in viewership immediately. And I owe him a debt of gratitude for that. And then he brought me back in about a year later. Those interviews are still out there on his channel. And so I recommend yep. anybody who hasn't watched his channel before, there's some great interviews out there. He's got a couple on there with Howard. He's got Heavy. He's got me a couple of times. Um, I got interviewed once. Month. He's got a bunch yep. of people. He's got a bunch of people on there. Some of them I like, some of them I don't like. I'm not going to name names. Well, I mean, you know, just just to think about Dave and his journey, and uh, he's just he's he, you know when you when you look at the the original some of the people originally in the Craps Nation group, they're they're very humble people, and Dave is so down to earth. Um, he's so meticulous as an interviewer. You think that's what he does for a living? You know that he's in some type of broadcast. Uh, um, business uh but he, he his planning his organization and his delivery and the questions and he keeps things moving unlike me who just talks too much <laughs> no, I, I like dave a lot i have a lot of respect for him uh in fact heavy taught a class at his house before so um you know that i mean he's a great guy he is a great guy and anybody anybody who will open up a house for a bunch of strangers uh to come in and take a craft class is special my wife, I'd have to send her to, you know, visit family or something. She'd go paranoid. All right. So um, let's go ahead and wrap it up here. I have one final question that I'm going to put up here. Mudslide wants to know what's next, guys. Uh, so, uh, G, if you want to, uh, we know the date's going to be the uh, 6th of February. Uh, if you want to kind of like give some insight as to what to uh, what to expect next, uh, it will go from yeah. there. Yeah. Next show will be about, again, mindfulness. Talk about what, you know, how you scout tables, 
uh, how can you tell if a table is bouncy, too bouncy, not bouncy enough, just by looking at it, just by list, watching the dice, um, how how to decide what you know what you're gonna whether you're gonna play or not on a on a certain table, um, how to read people on the table. It, it's about it's about being mindful and using common sense in the casino to to get on a table that would give you the best odds. No, no guarantees, no guarantees, but gives you a better, best odds that you, you maybe can make money. Okay. All right, Ed, any final words from you? Well, Jeff, first I want to thank you again for being such a great moderator and, and assisting, assisting us with this, this show. I really, really appreciate you and what you've done uh for us here and for the viewers who who've tuned in uh i can't express my thanks to you enough uh and i urge everybody to support you in any way they can uh outside of that i appreciate the viewers we we do appreciate the viewers showing in and i look forward to when we actually get sideshow on here if he don't show up I'm gonna find somebody else, drag them in here, and we're gonna have some live sessions or something. We're gonna we're gonna do this live as best we can. Once we get through next week, we're gonna do this live on working. You know, you you you've all you've all seen me do a little bit with sideshow before, but we're gonna go more in depth. We're gonna go as deep as we can, video allowing. There's nothing like hands on in front of a student. That can't be duplicated, but we're going to try our best to give him tips and ideas and things we see and things to work on during a two week period when we come back. Then when we come back, we're going to work, see how, he, how he's tossing. We're going to critique it. We're going to continue to work on his toss until we get him. And my goal is to get him to an eight SRR. I don't know what, if, if, if Gargoyle has that or not, I don't know if we'll get there. But that's the goal. We'd love to see a seven and a half to eight SRR. That'd be fantastic. Would be fantastic. Yep. Yep. Right. And I'll echo I'll echo what Ed said, Jeff. Thanks very much for everything you do. And and the viewers, I mean, you guys are taking two and a half, three hours of your time watching, you know, Evan Costello here trying to show you some stuff about about dice. Um and you know, and all the questions. It, it makes me want to stay here for another three hours because, you know, you, you got you guys are the best. <laughs> it had a long day, uh, but yes. Yeah. Um, We're not going to stay here for another three hours, but, you know, yeah. you, you guys, you guys are, you guys are what makes this possible, you know? Yep, and, it is. And, and you guys are the people watching it while we're doing it. Number one, and only number one, we want better shooters at the table. And if anything we do helps that happen, then good. We yep. want better shooters at the table. Everybody right. profits that. Way. And and that was uh, that was one of the the bullet points uh, that is important for the goals we set for the show. Well, what you just said there, Ed. Um, you know, there's the you might I might ask you to repeat it again, just so people can understand the seriousness of the content that we're giving away. God complex keeps keeps making our heads swell with these comments. He says, but it is a it is great. Uh, it is a good place to share content, and it was a good show. At least I feel so, uh, Ed. But we are looking for better players, knowledgeable players at the table. We know there's always going to be new players, but we want to, I guess, educate and make sure people know that there's a lot to this game. A lot. Uh, there's a tremendous amount. There's a mental aspect. There's a physical aspect. There's all kinds of things involved. And I'm going to tell God Complex, email me at rolltowincraps at gmail.com. I know you're on uh, – Jeff's channel most of the time, if not all the time, and I don't blame you. But if you'll email me, I'd love to call it farm with you because I do like tweets. Yeah. All right. So uh, with that said, I'm going to answer Julio's question here. Um, would you use viewers to toss with you on one of your lives? This show is about uh, constructive um education and, and, and working with somebody. I'm not going to say that we wouldn't use a random viewer, but if you would like to come on on my show, 
If all you need is a cell phone and you want to roll out one of my shows, who we are, I'd be glad to have you on my channel. Uh, I do daytime shows. I do nighttime shows. Uh, but uh, as far as this show goes, I can't answer that question because it's those two guys up there. It's their show. It's not, it's not my show. So, but um, sometimes we always need victims. So um, anything else, Ed? And speaking, speaking of victims, speaking of victims, um, once we're done with Sideshow, we're going to need another victim. And there you have it. It's going to be one of our viewers. It's going to be one of our viewers. You know, as long as they have a camera and they're willing to put the time in, we will consider it. We'll just, we'll use, we'll use uh, Jeff's uh, wheel of uh, prizes to put the names in. <laughs> but no, I'm serious. I mean, we want to take, we, we want to take a, just a, you know, a, a random viewer that wants to get better at the game. And as, as long as they're willing to put in the time and they have something that we can see, if Ed's willing, I'm willing. All right, um, cool. Let's uh, let's go ahead and call the show here. Um, we're nine minutes away from three hours. We say it. We say it every single time that um, we're not we're going, going to an hour and fifty minutes too long. Yep, uh, an hour and fifty minutes. Practice like you play, everybody. Play like you practice. Go roll to win. And guys, I want to appreciate these two guys that are over that way. Um, I, I have learned every time I run one of these shows, I learn something. To everybody out there that's the viewers and the subscribers and the members to both the channels, thank you very much. Thank you for all the birthday wishes. Appreciate that, Jim. We'll see you on February 6th for the next episode of Unraveling the Mysteries of Dice Influence. And uh, I think it's going to be a good one. This one exceeded my expectations. Till next time, guys, be safe. Play smart. <laughs>